Hey, this is Dylan. I'm currently in Zaporozhye filming with artillery crews, grad rocket crews, and a lot of this is pretty dangerous work, so I've had to be on the down low, no streaming, but I got some great content for you. A great debate with Jackson Tinkle, I mean Hinkle, from a, I think about a year or two years ago now. And even if you have seen it, you should watch it again. It's a great blast in the past, and it shows how much of an uneducated, knuckle-dragging window licker Jackson Hinkle really is. And right now, we see him gallivanting across Russia, driving around in tanks, playing with toys in full camo with white sneakers like a fool. And so I just want to show you guys how much of a fool he really is, or just remind you. Enjoy the debate. I'll be back to regular streaming very shortly. How's it going, Jackson? I'm uh, I'm doing okay. I have a bit of a sore throat. Other than that, I'm fine. No worries. How are you? Uh, I'm doing okay. I'm, I'm uh, taking my day off because I had to go to a board meeting, but um, I'm happy... Uh, happy to be here cool um what do you want to talk about because i feel like we could talk about you see i i used to have this mindset because i'm, I'm new to debating vosh was my first debate uh, by so the way, i was I like see you, i was way. like my first debate i was like you know i only want to debate like actual fucking big fish hence why i was like you know who the fuck is dylan burns i'm not gonna waste my time on this little shit lib that is an anti or is an imperialist i'm not gonna waste my time on this shit uh -huh. So now I have you here because I've changed my strategy. I'm just going to, I'm going to literally run through all of you. I'm going to run through all of you one by one. So okay. you're the it's first kinda, one on the talking block to run to tonight. Me. I can't see you. Good to have you here. So what do you want to talk about? I can't see you, Jackson. All I see is gray. Tune onto my Twitch stream. You're not going to see me on Discord. I'm streaming right now. <laughs> okay, then I'll turn off then. Okay. I'll, what turn the fuck? Your, I'll tune into your t uh, Twitch stream. If just you leave your camera on. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I, just thought, I thought camera. you did. Hey, babe, if I can't see you on Discord, why? What did you just call me? I said, if I didn't call you anything. I said, if I can't see you on Discord, then why I can't? Why am I going to show myself on Discord? Because I'm putting your face on my Twitch stream. Ah, okay. Wonderful. Thank you so much for the guest, uh, the guest appearance. Okay, so um, first off, you, you say like a lot what of things. Babe? What? Did you say babe, or did I mishear that? I think you misheard that. You're not my type, Jackson. You know, sometimes if we want to hear things, we hear them. No, everyone in my chat heard it. Go on, though. What do you want to talk about? Okay, whatever. Um, the first thing I wanted to talk about is your claim that I that I have like proposed myself to be like some foreign policy expert, right? Bro, what, it says it in your bio. What does it say it in my says, bio? It says you are a foreign policy advisor to a congressional candidate. Okay. And that that's what an expert would do if you're Wait, you're advising that's what the an nation would do. congressional okay. candidates on fucking foreign policy. That's what a foreign policy expert would do. You're providing an expert analysis of foreign policy to someone who wants to sit uh -huh. in the halls of Congress. Okay, so I don't like to use the word expert. I've never proposed myself to be an expert. You and Bad and Panada have both said this. People have claimed I've made this before. I've never claimed myself to be an expert. I've advised people. I'll just tell people my experience with foreign policy, and they choose sometimes that I would be useful. For example, I, I helped uh, Jill Carter, state senator, when she was running for Congress, get ready for uh, an interview about uh, the Israel-Palestine conflict on Occurred. the issue of BDS. Occurred. And I told Would her, you concede that uh, non-experts typically do not provide analysis on foreign policy? policy to congressional candidates or to state senators um sometimes i don't know i it's when people call themselves an expert i just have a, a high you barrier. wouldn't concede on that point because i would i, I would say yeah like non-experts sure. i just want i just want to make sure that, that it's not things. perpetuated that i've called myself an expert of some sort i want other people to go to other sources if they hear anything on my channel i just want to make sure that's perpetuated hey. and i don't want anybody to take my word at face value Okay, I don't really care, but I'll, I'll abide by okay. your terminology of being an advisor. Okay, so want to talk about Taiwan? I'm down to talk about Taiwan. I'm down to talk about AOC. I'm down to talk about, uh, I'm down to talk about anything. Okay, I, I want to talk about Taiwan because this is the thing that everybody's been, been really badgering me over, right? This is the, okay. big, the big thing. Okay, so number one, I just want to ask, do you agree with Bad Empanada that I'm going to be like a Kissingerian type of some sort? Bro, I, I don't know. I you, I want to talk about Taiwan. I okay. don't. I don't want to. Okay, then. As long as you, as long as you didn't make a similar claim. Fine. Variant. So what's what's my pro, what's uh what's wrong with my tweet? Because that's the big thing that everybody's obsessed about. What's wrong with it? 
I, I do not believe that we should be propping up other militaries, uh, especially in an effort to try and wage a new Cold War against China and turn China against Taiwan. I don't think we should be doing that. Um, and I think it's uh, antithetical to the principles of American government to do that. Okay. So you believe that us funding this what's is... You, what's, what, you elaborate on your opinion first. You okay. elaborate on your opinion first, because so, you're the one who put out the initial tweet about Hassan. What was your principal concern over Hassan's uh, take? My I principal, thought it was pretty my reasonable. Princ my principal concern is that he's using the word escalation extremely incorrectly. The idea that us sending these arms to Taiwan is an escalation, I find to be quite silly. Definitely since this has been a policy of the United States since 1979, and that's only officially under the Taiwan Relations Act, we've been sending them aid much before that. So to consider it an escalation when Keep we're going. continuing a continuation of American policy is just not factually correct. It would be the status quo. It would be the perpetuation so of the status quo. So if you well, actually, it's it's an increased sum of armament that we're sending. But also, if you think that uh, that's some sort of a non escalation, then what do you think the explicit purpose of the United States providing uh, military support in general for a sovereign or sovereign entity that's trying in some ways to uh, disassociate itself from China and become its own sovereign nation or the United States goal is to, you know, cut Taiwan off and away from China. What do you think the goal is of the U.S. in intervening there? So first, about the first part of that, um, it is an increased sum, but a big reason why it's increased is number one, inflation, and number two, because the defensive needs of Taiwan has increased over the years. As the Chinese military increases its capabilities- What's defensive needs? It's a part of China. The U.S. recognizes not, it as a part of China. Not, no, you're getting two things mixed up. The U.S. does have getting, an embassy there. Getting, they recognize no, it's part we, of China. No, we do have an embassy there. We do. We do. It's called, the Taiwan, it's called the Taiwan Institute, the American Institute in That's Taiwan. That's not a fucking it embassy, a, Dylan. Dylan. That's not a it fucking embassy. We don't have an embassy there because it's not a sovereign country okay if it was a sovereign country we would it have an embassy okay God. do you want to do you want to calm down do you so want to have like actually I'm trying, reasonable takes I, well i want to finish my statements you're not even letting me finish jackson it doesn't function as an embassy because it's not an embassy but it does function as an embassy no, it doesn't. It does if everything it an embassy country, does. Wait, wait, can I finish? It does function. It, it, it deals with passport issues. It deals, it is what our number one negotiating and talking to of Taiwan, it functions as that. It does name one thing that an embassy does that the American Institute in Taiwan does not do. I'm just telling you, it's not an embassy because okay. it's not a sovereign country. And I'm telling so you, it, label it as such would be very, so, very, very disingenuous. So do, it would be towing the State Department line of saying that Taiwan is in its somehow own way a, a sovereign country. It's not. So you, you are conceding that it does function as an embassy, though? I'm not conceding anything. I'm just but saying. But you just said that it doesn't function as an embassy. I'm saying that it, no, I said it's not an embassy. But then, it's you, not then, an embassy. then you said that it didn't function as an I'm embassy. I'm saying it's not an embassy, and for that reason, you can't claim that it functions as an embassy. But it because does, it's not does an embassy. then what thing does an embassy do that the American Institute in Taiwan doesn't do? One thing, anything, literally anything. Anything in the world. It One example. Be, it, would, it, would, it would be an embassy if it was an embassy. That's it's not, not an embassy. That's it's not, not an answer country. to my question, Jackson. It's not its own country. It doesn't so have an embassy. It does everything that an States. embassy does. Just like the there's a, there's another example of, of a Taiwanese institute of a similar nature in the United States that has a basically what would be a Taiwanese institute. ambassador that was there, for example, an at Joe Biden's right? inauguration. An institute, yes, not an, an institute, embassy. but it does everything so, an embassy does. If it was a country and if the United States recognized it as a country, then we would be calling it an embassy, correct? We we call it we don't call it an embassy because we wanted to warm because up. it's not a country well, and we don't you, recognize. Why do you why do you keep interrupting me, Jackson? Because you, gotta, you keep going on these illogical paths that don't that deviate from what the Jackson, truth of the situation is. Jackson, you got to let me finish my statements or I can't talk to you. It's not a statement if it's a lie, but go on. Lies can also be statements, and you haven't proven that it's a lie. It does function as an embassy. You're the one who said it didn't function as an embassy. You're so the I'm one asking who you, said what does it do? It doesn't recognize it as, a, as a, you know, a, a part of China. You started pushing back on yeah, that. Well, yes, here's my statement. There's a, dif there's a difference between the one China policy and the one China principle, right? The, the, the Chinese government holds the one China 
principle. What the principle is, is that the mainland government, right, the PRC, is the sole governing body over mainland China and that Taiwan is a part of China, right? But the Taiwan, uh, but the one China policy is very similar, but the key distinction is that we don't really necessarily say that Taiwan is a part of China. We do not make that statement. It's ambiguous, just like most of our uh, policy on Taiwan is to give us wiggle room. Even the Chinese recognize this. The Ch no, the Chinese do not recognize. No, they, they, they that recognize the that's our position. They recognize that that's our position. I'm not saying they recognize that Taiwan's its own separate country, but they don't pretend that we have the t one China principle. The Chinese recognize that Taiwan is a part of their country. Okay, that's what the uh, Chinese the government. Taiwanese call themselves yes. the Republic of China. The U.S. doesn't have ambassadors in China. We're, we we don't have an embassy in China. It's not it's not its okay. own sovereign okay. country. I know you okay. want to try and so spin it. You can, we can the, talk the thing about is, Dylan, let's, Dylan, we can Dylan, just go Dylan, through all Dylan, the things Dylan, that make Dylan, it its own country. I just let you go on for like a minute to talk about all the dumb shit that you just put forward. Okay, so now let Jackson. me talk. So it doesn't have its own embassy. We don't have ambassadors there. Uh, they call themselves the Republic of China. China recognizes that it's a part of China. Uh, so, I mean, you're, you're, just, you're just avoiding the principal debate that we were starting to have at the beginning of this live stream, which was, what is your excuse for saying that it's reasonable for the U.S. to give an increased supply of armament to Taiwan at this point in time okay. when there is increased aggression towards China okay. from the U.S. and our Western allies in a myriad of complex ways. So first, I'm going to assert why I think it's a country. When it comes to what most countries would designate what is countries, whether you go with Webster Dictionary, any dictionary you put in front of me. The it's not a country. Okay, I, I, you can say words. Now can I finish? The U.S. doesn't recognize it as a country. So are you saying that you personally recognize it as a country or the U.S. recognizes it? I personally that? recognize it as a country because okay, not so recognizing it. Wait, let me finish. Can I Dylan please? Burns recognizes Taiwan as a country, but the United States doesn't. Go on. Okay. I you concede that. The United, yes, I concede that because the United States doesn't recognize it as a country out of formality and trying to keep ties with the Chinese government, right? It's, it's ridden a tightrope for a very long time, right? For example, uh, Kissinger wanted to throw Taiwan under the bus. Many American industry, uh, administration wanted to throw Taiwan under the bus, and it was Congress that stepped in and stopped them on many occasions. Sometimes it was the opposite. Now, when it comes to why it's a country, it has its own functioning judiciary. It has its own military. It has its own flag. It has its own anthem. It has its own currency. It has its own identity that has formed over years. It has its own history separate from China. It is part of multiple uh, international organizations, not all international organizations, Organizations, but the United States isn't a part of, say, the International Criminal Court, even though we should be. And that doesn't make the United States not a real country, right? I don't believe that just like this isn't a country, this is a country. It's just the America gets to determine what is and isn't a country, and the China gets to determine what is and isn't a country. That's why when we didn't recognize mainland China, I still consider that a country. So you're saying that you know more than the leaders of the U.S. government and the international community, which all define Taiwan as being a part of China. No, I, I That's just your opinion. Me, That's just I, your opinion. Can I, respond I get it. To that That's just point? your opinion. Let me you just say to that, that Taiwan's a country, and no one fucking well, agrees with you. No, that's no not true. No one in the chat agrees with you. No one on Twitch agrees with you. The that's U.S. government true. doesn't agree with you. China doesn't true. agree with you. The majority of people in Taiwan don't agree with you. That's, Type that's one definitely in chat not, that's you, definitely you not don't true. Don't agree okay. with Dylan Burns here, I because don't, I don't think any of you agree with him. So I, Dylan, go on. I Explain why the United States, uh, you know, in in your eyes, uh, should be providing an increased armament to Taiwan that is not its own now, country. Number one, you're wrong again. The United States, in all function, recognizes it as a country, does not state it because they know it would piss off China. This is true of basically so every other... Let me, let me let me finish. You, I've let you go they on your spiel. It as a let me go on my spiel. Just because somebody recognize doesn't it recognize it as a country it. does not Just mean it. it's not a country, Just right? They okay. don't recognize I already, it as a I already said this earlier. Now, can I finish? Can I... Jackson, calm down, Okay. You, you're, you're I, I, I understand because you, I'm you're not your inner point. No, because you're interrupting you me. And I'm trying to say US, points. You you're not said, debunking you anything. You said that the U.S. sees it yes, as the a United country, States but it won't does not it, rule the world. I don't know if you believe country. China and the United States are the only two powers that dictate what it is and isn't a country. But you know what? There are nations on this planet that say it's a country and have formal embassies with it. It's not a lot, but it's changed with time because US the mainland's influence has grown. Yes, we have changed with it, but we treat it no, in a country. The U.S. does not have embassies. I, I, I said does not have we have a functional embassy 
in Taiwan. We have a functional ambassador you just in said Taiwan. That the U.S. is one of them. We don't have an embassy no, there. No, I said it's one we of them. No, have I said that the United States is one we of the na- No, you're not country. listening to me. I said it's one of those who changed its policy when it comes to embassies and national recognition officially. I was trying to tell you that it does not officially recognize it as a country. But I don't believe that just a number of nations recognizing something as a country means that it becomes a country. Definitely when the reasons they recognize it as a not a country, even though unofficially many have a similar policy as the United States and having private institutes act as ambassadors in all ways, act as, act as embassies in all ways, is because they want Chinese economic power in their countries. They want the Belt and Road Initiative. They want these things, which I'm in favor of. I'm in favor of the Belt and Road Initiative. I want trade. I want international prosperity. But just because you've been strong-armed by the Chinese government to get rid of your embassy does not mean you automatically now are no longer a country. Because if that was the case, then would you agree that in 1950, the, the Taiwanese government was the official government of Taiwan of China, and we should treat that as the official government of China just because less nations recognize the mainland that would be ridiculous so you do realize though that i mean your preferred strategy here of like providing increase of armament to taiwan which you claim is yes. a sovereign country but no one else does um and true. and that uh the u.s increase aggression towards china you say that that's like what we should be doing right no you say I, that that's, that's a not, good thing that's that we should be providing true. this increased armament which I, is an increase in aggression I, and if you believe that that's obviously going to uh that that's going to potentially one day when the aggression reach, reaches a certain peak level is going to splinter potentially if the u.s gets its wishes taiwan from china that would be the u.s's wishes here Right. Or at least economically splinter Taiwan from China. Now, China makes up a greater portion of trade with Taiwan than the U.S. currently does. Uh Taiwan makes up a greater portion of trade and imports with Taiwan than the U.S. does by a great sum. So why, if you are claiming that you want to increase trade with China, you want these, I mean, I I would assume this is accurate. You'd want more mutually beneficial uh, trade agreement agreements between countries all across the world. Why would you want this U.S. policy of increased aggression, which will only inevitably result in the splintering, at least economically, of Taiwan from China, and which will result in more harm for the people within Taiwan? So first, I just want to say you're, you're wrong that nobody recognizes the official government. Guatemala does, Haiti does, Honduras does, Paraguay does, Nicaragua does, Belize does. There's many countries that do. Not a ton. Per- what do those countries have in common? So, wait, wait, wait. If that's the, if that's the, if that's the note, if it's they all have in common, then why does the American position on it matter? If the idea of only American allies doing it, then why would the American recognition of Taiwan oh, matter in this case then? I didn't push back on your uh, your assessed motive of the United States for not recognizing Taiwan as a sovereign country. I just said that they do not recognize Taiwan as a sovereign country. Okay, there. Anyway, let's get to the main point again. So I do support when it comes to China, I want to de-escalate. I agree with Joe Biden's, even though it was milk toast speech at the UN, that they should come together kumbaya style and try to find res- resolutions. I didn't agree with Trump's tariffs on China. I didn't agree with that at all. But just because I want to de-escalate doesn't mean I abandon my values when it comes to you Taiwan. You don't want to de-escalate. You want Wait. the US to give more arms but it's not Taiwan. How is it an escalation if we're just continuing the status quo when it comes to Taiwan? Because that's what we're doing when it comes to the Taiwan Relations Act. It hasn't changed. It's an, it's an increase in armament. It's an increase and in it armament. goes hand in hand with AUKUS. It goes hand in hand with everything we're doing in the South China Sea. It goes hand in hand with all of the military placements we have surrounding China. It goes hand in hand with the economic warfare against China. You can't look at just one policy uh alone without Out. assessing all of the other things that the u.s is doing on a global scale to counter and increase uh yeah. counter china and increase aggression against china you can't do if that you can ask me about those specifics about any of those things if you want to but right now i'm talking about this specific policy on whether we support or not support it and when it comes to this the taiwan relations act is thank very you, clear Casey. what i got a sub oh okay i said thank you congrats so the Taiwan Relation Act is very clear that when it comes to supplying arms to Taiwan, it should be purely and only determined 
by their defensive needs and we provide them weapons of a defensive character. Now, when it says that, it means its needs, whether it has to do with inflation increasing or its strategic needs. That means that the policy of it increasing some years and decreasing other years has been constant for the entirety of our relationship with Taiwan post-1979, which, by the way, was the same time that we had one of the most, one of the best relationships with China, because it was the it was the midst of the Sino-Soviet split, and they wanted to open up to the United States, and we wanted them to open up to us. And so, if we've had this policy through both hard times when it comes to Chinese relations and easygoing times when it comes to Chinese relations, I don't understand how this is an escalation if it's a continuation of what we've been doing for years. Well, I have two things. First of all, um, you have to look at the relationship that the United States and the leadership within, uh, or sorry, the, the relationship the United States had with Taiwan and the leadership within Taiwan and what they were doing to people within Taiwan during okay. that period as well. But also, white terror. Um, you have to assess the fact that the U.S., in my eyes, should not be providing, uh, you know, like we, we shouldn't be bankrolling these countries in military aid. We shouldn't be bankrolling uh, countries in military armament and just like completely stuffing them full of all of the military weapons that we could, you know, squeeze out of the military industrial complex in a given year because uh, that country should be able to defend themselves on their own. We, they shouldn't have to rely on U.S. taxpayer uh, support to wage their own alleged defensive wars, which I would argue, That's given defensive. the U.S. motive for escalating tensions and all the ways they are with China, uh, this, this aim that the U.S. has with Taiwan is not to support any sort of defensive measures. Again, my my principal concern would be uh, the U.S.'s goal to splinter Taiwan, uh, if not only economically, but, uh, you know, geographically from China. Okay, so we're moving away from the idea that it's an escalation then, and we're going on to the motives behind it then, right? Okay, so when it comes to Taiwan and these arms, you say, you, you question whether it is defensive. So... Uh, I'm not... No, okay, so no, I'm saying in general... Okay. I question the motives of the U.S. government in you said that bankrolling was like alleged, countries in military armament though. and stuffing them chock full of military weapons, right? Because the U.S. doesn't just do that because we have we have a sincere care for a country's defensive operations. I mean, you have all of American uh, or modern American foreign policy precedent to back that up. Wait, say that last part again. Before the, you, you definitely said, just heard me. I'm not going to fucking repeat well, myself. No, just I, say what you're going to say. I just wanted, just wanted to hear it. I didn't hear. You. Okay, whatever. If you don't want to be polite, um, all of all of modern American U.S. foreign policy history backs up the precedent that the U.S. is not gravely concerned with the defense of any given nation or any given people. We do things so as to exert further dominance as an empire across the globe and to achieve our foreign policy goals and aims. Okay, so I will first just say that the weapons that we're providing them, none of them are going to be, are like purely offensive weapons. These are weapons that could maybe how you, be- How do you dictate that? Tell me how you dictate that. What, what sort of mechanisms do you have in place to dictate that? The mechanism, wait, do you mean mechanism I have in place? No, no, that the U.S. Well, I'm, government I'm tell is providing well, I'm, these I'm weapons. Telling, I'm no, no, telling, no, 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 okay. no. The weapon, the, 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 the mechanisms that the U.S. government and their relations with Taiwan have in place to control that they're not going to be used for offensive means. Tell me. I don't have that information. Uh, you want to know, know why you don't have that information, Dylan? You want to know why you don't have that information? Because the same thing was said when Biden entered office about Yemen. They okay. said they're only going to be providing defensive weapons, yes. missiles, and military supplies mm -hmm. for Saudi Arabia, and it just so happens that they okay. use them for offensive operations in Yemen. So you have found offensive weapons that Taiwan is in control of that we gave them? I'm asking you to provide the- well, No, you're making the claim. You're making I'm the claim. You're I'm making asking, the claim that I'm, they have I'm offensive asking, weapons or we're going to do so. so. I'm not I'm, making a claim. I'm asking you okay. to provide the structures that are in place well, I, that will guarantee that these never, weapons are not I used never, for offensive I operations. I never alleged that there were structures in you place. You said that they were going to be used for defensive would, operations I would only. Have, That's what wait, you said, Dylan. Yes, yes you and so— said they are going to be used for defensive and they are, operations. And they are. So and they are. Jackson, listen. you got to calm down if we're going to have a conversation here. Tell me how they're going to be used. Jackson, they are going to be used— Either concede that you're wrong or tell me how they're going to be used for defensive only. 
calm down, okay? You can't just be tell a me. mini Haas, okay? Tell me. Look. Okay, you, you're not going to tell you're me. Making you the claim. That point. You're making the claim. No, I don't concede the point. You're just tell being, me you're being tell anal me. for no tell reason. Me. Because I am telling tell you. Me. You would need to provide me evidence that we're providing them offensive weapons for me to be like, wow, that's terrible. We shouldn't not be doing my that. my claim, Dylan. My claim that's is we're giving them defensive claim. weapons. I have checked Your the weapons we're giving them. Your claim is that them. they're providing them I have, defensive I've personally, weapons. I've I asked wait, you yes, what structures you, do they yes. have in place to guarantee that, I, and you But just because them. there isn't a structure in place to guarantee it doesn't them. mean we haven't given them defensive weapons. Are you alleging that the artillery we gave them is going to shoot over the the Sea of China? The main the, they're going to shoot over from the mainland of Taiwan? Is that Dylan. what you're alleging? Are you alleging that the F-16s we gave them Dylan. are going to do bombing Dylan. runs on mainland? Dylan. You're Dylan. you got to show Dylan. me offensive Dylan. weapons if you're making the Dylan. claim. Dylan, I didn't make that claim. Tell well, me when I made stop, that claim. Stop. Tell me the claim I made. Okay. Tell me the statement I said. You are asking me to provide an example of structures in place to stop us from selling offensive weapons to Taiwan. And I responded, I don't know of any, but I have yet to see us sell what I would consider these purely offensive weapons to Taiwan. So please, if there is a concern about this, instead of yelling and getting your dunkaroos, I'd like to see that because that would be very concerning to me. Dylan, That'd be something I want to call just, my congressman I just about. told you, Dylan, I just explained to you that we don't have those increased armaments in Taiwan yet. The future has not taken place yet. But what we can okay, do so there are is look at modern American foreign policy precedent and look at the fact that that same exact thing has happened in Yemen, where Biden said that he was only going to provide defensive weaponry for Saudi Arabia, and they go on to use them to bomb innocent Yemeni children. Okay. So what I'm saying is, unless there's a structure in place to guarantee that, then maybe we shouldn't be providing them with military armament, because this is the same fucking thing we do every time the U.S. empire engages okay. in intervention in another country. So you're yelling about something that has yet to occur, and I agree politicians lie sometimes and that's bad and i think we should immediately end our support sometimes yes sometimes, sometimes. yes politicians lie sometimes many times 90 to percent of the time we don't need to be anal over that i'm acknowledging that joe biden lied you want me to what else do you need me okay. to say so do you recognize okay, can I, the, well, can inherent, I the inherent the inherent flaw no in a system you don't recognize I, I, it. You I, see I, it happening in Yemen, but you don't understand so, how that could happen in okay. another country. I, I understand. Another well, listen, listen. If you know what, I agree. So you and me, let's go to D.C. and say, hey, put checks on this, official checks on this, which both, by the way, I don't know. Have you checked if there's official checks on this or not? Have you gone no, and checked? Dylan, no, Dylan. You, I'm asking Dylan. if you have. Because... Exactly. You're asking me a question. And I'm going to answer it. Okay. There might be official checks on it. There were official checks on Yemen. There were official checks on the arms that were going to Saudi Arabia as it related to offensive operations in Yemen, but the checks don't matter because there's no system in place to actually guarantee that those checks are upheld, hence why we shouldn't just be providing armament to uh, you know entities within sovereign nations that could potentially try and sow discord with those weapons. So... The interaction we just had is that you asked me a question on whether there are official checks in place to make sure the defensive. I say I don't know because I'm trying to. No, I didn't. Amount. No, I didn't. I said, what are the structures in place yes, to guarantee okay. they're not what used are, for offensive yes. operations? And I tell you, I don't know. And then you go on this rant about how terrible and bad it is. And, da, da, da. and then I ask, well, do you know? And then you say, well, I don't know. So wouldn't the solution here, number one, to be go and Google and find out if this is the case, since neither of us seem no. to know this. And, and number two, if this doesn't matter to you either which way, why even talk about this for any amount of time? Because, Dylan, my principal concern here is that the U.S. is giving an increased supply of armament to Taiwan. Okay. And there is no structure or system in place that has been put forward, as I know of, yet in as any you know country okay. that could guarantee that uh, you know military armament isn't used for offensive operations. So regardless of whether they what, take the Yemen approach, the Saudi Arabian approach, and do the same thing here, it doesn't really fucking matter. Even if they did it, it would be a nice gesture, but it wouldn't really fucking matter because at the end of the day, Taiwan's still going to use these weapons in whatever way the okay. U.S. empire says they should use these weapons, hence why we shouldn't be giving fucking Taiwan weapons. Okay. Don't you get it? What's, Don't you fucking stop, get it? You, you need to calm down, okay? 
I no, please, I can't. You got it. Yes, takes. Well, no, How do you're, you not understand you, this? you haven't researched any of this, head. and you're Get this through your head. Okay, Jackson. Look. Okay, is this like press TV talking points? Like, I don't like. Why are you so angry about this? Okay, you need Get to, it through your head. Need to calm down, so I could talk to you like a rational human being. Okay, there's only one Haas on Twitch. Okay, I don't need there to be two. <laughs> You're right. It's a fucking empire, and it's crashing upon the gates of BreadTube. You are going down with these absolutely delusional takes. Number one, say I'm your not, next. I'm thing. not even. Say your next point. Number one, why, your, am I part of BreadTube? Say your next point. I'm not. Say your next point. I'm not part say of your BreadTube. Next point. I, say your next point. Explain why we should be giving an increased military armament. Okay. To Taiwan. So number one, what you you allege that there's like basically no standard that could check this. Da da da. Okay. What would what standard would you even have, basically? If because obviously you don't want to do this, period. But you're saying we could. There's no standard we could even possibly have to make sure this is the case. So like, what what percentage likelihood would you need to like? Would you need like a hundred percent assurance that no one could like jilt, jilt the system? Like, what system would you put forward? And and that is different when it comes to checking to make sure that these weapons are defensive. I know you don't want to send them in the first place, but if you have a problem with the system in place, you got to tell me what system would you like in its place if that was the case, if if that's one of your problems with it. No, I don't want to send them at all. Well, I'm yes, just I'm saying, saying, I'm saying I acknowledge that. I'm just debunking your bullshit but, argument that these are only going to be used for defensive I, operations. Yes, I don't want but, they, but they are, and you have no evidence. Otherwise, you can just say, well, let's look at Yemen, look at there. Okay, but this is the Pacific. The strategy for Yemen is that the United States wants the Houthis to lose the civil war because we want our allies, Saudi Arabia, to have a beneficial government in Yemen. We do not have or under any delusion that Taiwan is going to invade and retake the mainland the Truman administration gave up that those hopes a long time ago. The Chai, uh, Ch Shek and his and his offspring failed miserably. The white terror is over. There is uh, no auspices to the United States or Taiwan Dylan. is going to do an invasion. So I need evidence Dylan. of some sort that we're going tell to sell when offensive that, weapons. Tell me when I thought that I ever said that I thought that was the explicit goal of the United okay, States. Tell me when I said that. I do, I'm not. Tell but, me. but it doesn't make sense for us to okay, sell so them off. Why are you? Let, why I mean, are you because let me, this because let me, man well, I'm that not creating. Let me finish. Let me finish. You're creating so, a straw man. No. You're acting just gotta, in you hypotheticals. Gotta, you gotta let me finish. I know you like Vosh, but you probably shouldn't like take every single you gotta, debate strategy look, that he's Why were you so more work. nice to Vosh and you're such an asshole now? What the, what's Well, you changed? haven't called me a Nazi yet, so there, there's that. I, I will be a little bit I'm nicer not, to I'm you. not gonna call you a Nazi because I don't think you're a Nazi. So, Dylan, you but say let me that- finish uh, my, Can I finish my point? Okay. Okay, I'm trying to be nice. I, I specifically, when this Taiwan discourse started, I was like, I'm going to be as good faith as possible. Man, you're testing me, man. Look. Well, you're not being that good faith because you say to. that my, really you, you, you're asking me if my principal concern well, is over whether or not they're well, defense no, or I'm not. not. I'm I've not. I've said it like brought 20 up, times. My brought principal up the concern topic is that we're sending we're arms to Taiwan. A, we're trying to have like somewhat of a discussion here. And since you brought it up, I wanted to talk about it. Go on. So... My thing is, I don't even think the United States would have a large interest in giving Taiwan offensive weapons at this point, since offensive weapons is not really that could strike the mainland or do any of the civilian damage about the mainland that the United States could provide them would not benefit our strategic goal, which our strategic goal is to make sure that Taiwan stays independent from China as its own entity, if you don't want to call its government, we'll use the word entity to just to move forward. So I don't, so if there's no evidence of us giving them offensive weapons at this point, if neither of us know if the checks in place, right? I don't understand why we're talking about this. And we can, we can just like, why we're talking about this again is because you said that they were going to be defensive yes, and arms, you, and right? You objected to that, and so I wanted to see the offensive. And I arms proved you we wrong. No, you didn't. You, you haven't proved that we've given them offensive arms. Give, show me evidence of that. No, I proved you. You were the you were the one who made the claim that these are defensive arms. Yes, you could not prove that these well, are no, only. I, I went. I went. And I, the weapons that I have seen are weapons that are going to be used for defensive purposes. For example, the F-16s. That's probably the thing that you could maybe put make the most hubbub about. That is being given to them because of Chinese. Uh, you can call it infringement. You can call it liberation. I don't call. I don't really care. Chinese aircraft are going into what Taiwan considers its airspace space on a frequent basis to test it they're like prodding it for seeing if there's weak points or just, mean, to, just china to is flying into chinese airspace yes t 
Taiwanese airspace, the separate country. Chinese yes. airspace. Taiwanese airspace. But again, let's Chinese let's use. Airspace. I'm trying to use nuclear. United States government let's, recognizes okay. that Chinese let's, airspace. But, I, no, that's okay. not that's not so, true. So, wait, 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 wait. Shut, wait, wait. Dylan. You just made a claim that's not Dylan. true. Prove that. No, Prove you it. made a claim. You that just wasn't said that true. the American government acknowledges that it's Chinese airspace. That's not true. We'll get to it in a second. Give me okay. one second because you said that uh, you said that you said that uh, these were going to be used for defensive operations, and they're okay. not. Okay, you evidence. can't prove that. Well, no, you can't prove that. I'm saying, wait, wait. I said that we have given them, we're giving them weapons of a defensive character that can be used for defensive purposes, and I know they're going to be used for defensive purposes because you don't know that. Okay. Show, show me any intention otherwise. I made a claim. Disprove my claim. How are they going to be used for offensive purposes? There's no guarantee that these are going to be used for defensive okay. purposes. I cannot see into the future, Dylan. There's okay. no way. So but also, you have no I would evidence. Argue, you I would don't argue, know if we have checks argue. in place. You don't know if we've given them offensive weapons. You, In fact, you haven't even disputed that claim. Uh, you don't know no, about. I have this, 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 that claim. Okay. I'm saying so. Show me, show claim, me evidence of that. Then. Show me that, that we, we sent them offensive weapons. I'm saying that we claim that there were going to be defensive operations only used for Saudi Arabian arms in Yemen, and that didn't end up happening. So how can you guarantee, based on the words of the same administration who guaranteed that, because that the these strategic are strategic priorities are completely different. The strategic priority in the conflict in Yemen was that we want the. The government in Saudi Arabia and their allied government. The aim, if well, the let, aim, you're not, of, why are you not going to let me? If the aim, no, because you've already said this. So if the okay. aim of Taiwan is to allegedly protect their own airspace that you call it Taiwanese airspace, if you will, which is a part of Chinese, uh, the Chinese country, right, then agreeing. they would be protecting themselves from their own country, which would mean that they'd be trying to secede if that's how they're going to be using their military against their own country. The Taiwanese government has said that we don't need to declare independence because we're already an independent country. That's a statement from the president of China who has won so the last two elections. So why do you think the United States would be having its puppet regimes across okay. the world? Is there uh, any, you got any evidence that we can we control the government in Taiwan through like 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 puppeteering or anything like that? Or are we, are we just using no, this government I as— I don't. I don't. We have foreign policy aims. Uh, we didn't control Iran before we started warmongering in Iran and trying to commit regime change in Iran either or any okay. other country for that matter. That's kind of how regime change works. So you think we're going to do what's what is that? How is that relevant to Taiwan? Are we going to do regime change in Taiwan or what's what's the allegation? I never made that explicit claim. Okay, so I that's, said that's that it could just be economic splintering from China. It could be trying to, uh, you know, get China to place some sort of like economic sanctions within uh, Taiwan. We don't know, but we do know that the U.S. has sinister goals there, okay. and they are increasing the aggression towards okay. China and increasing their support for Taiwan in a myriad of ways. Okay. So specifically the body, the political body, the political group think within Taiwan who would like to either secede or have okay. uh, limited engagement with China. Okay. Again, they, this, the government of China, I mean, of, of uh, China, of China. Okay. I understand that is their position. That's your position. But the government of Taiwan has said they don't even need to declare independence because they already consider themselves independent. The people of Taiwan have elected Tsai Ing-wen on two occasions, and she is one of the most pro separate like separate country, quote unquote, independence candidates you could possibly think of. So the Do you understand though that there are people within Taiwan who would love of to course. have uh, Taiwan secede in of the course. same and way, in like the same way, mm -hmm. in the same way that uh, on you know year after year after year, uh, Bolivians re resoundingly uh, elected uh, Evo Morales to serve as president, mm -hmm. but then you had a very, very, very small faction of individuals led by Janine Añez, uh, mm -hmm. who led a coup in the country. Okay. The popular will doesn't matter when the U.S. empire is involved. Okay, so the popular will does not matter when the U.S. empire is involved. Now, right. let me just say, the, the people in Taiwan that want to be back part of China is a very, very, very small minority. The same way that the population— Doesn't of, matter. Doesn't matter. So the will of the Taiwanese people does not matter is one of the things you're saying here. To the U.S. Empire, it does not matter. To me, it matters. Well, you just see it as an arm of the of the U.S. Empire, but I don't see it simply Dylan, as that. I see I it as also arms to Taiwan, or is the U.S. Empire providing? The U.S. Arms empire is partying in terms of Taiwan, but just because the United States arms. supports arms, weapons, whatever you want to call it, just because the United States supports a country through military means or economic means, does that mean we need to just disregard what their people want? Their people want to say that's 
that's that's very dismissive of the Taiwanese like needs. What is that like? Why would you dismiss not what I'm their saying. population? That's not what I'm saying at all. You're misconstruing my words. But it is dismissive. What I'm saying, what I'm saying is the U.S. Empire. No, I care more about the needs and the wants of the Taiwan people than you do. What the U.S. Really? Empire wants is to exert dominance and ex expand their empire in every way, shape imaginable. And they're going to do that by countering China in their eyes. Now, I think that's actually a very, very you know, short-sighted approach. I think the U.S. should be working in a mutually beneficial way with China to expand their reach across the globe. I think that makes far more sense for the longevity of you know, the U.S. empire and our country and our prosperity of our people. Um, but the U.S. empire currently is engaging in a campaign of all-out aggression uh, with China. And this is just a piece in their puzzle. Taiwan is a piece of their puzzle. So if that's the case, then would you be in support of the Chinese military backing off, the American military backing off, and the Taiwanese people having a referendum that is, that is monitored by uh, both Chinese, American, and international officials so they can all uh, make sure that it goes by the books, there's no interference of, of some sort? Would you be in favor of that then, a the referendum, and the Taiwanese people can pick their own future? I am... I'm not sure I would I'm not sure I would support that. No, because I think if you had looked at uh, I think if you had looked at California in 2016 and you had taken a fucking poll amongst all Californians in 2016, I mean, there, there's definitely it's definitely questionable as to whether or not this would have happened. But there's a chance that the majority of Californians would have voted to secede. And I think that's fucking absolutely dumb. Okay. Um, Taiwan is a part of China. And that's that's all that's, it is. That I mean, is the if they Chinese want government's secede, position. Yes. If they want to secede then they are going to have to guarantee they, based on their own rights uh, that they can actually you know, leverage their own power as a, as a sovereign oh. country and secede without U.S. backing, right? Without U.S. armament. So what you're saying in this case is that the might makes right here. I think that, uh, I think that the, I think Taiwan could not, I, I don't think Taiwan could uh, secede independently and form okay. their own sovereign country without the support of the U.S. empire. Okay. And if a country can't do I that— I could say the same thing about be, Palestine. They shouldn't, be, they shouldn't be guaranteed their own country. So do you hold that opinion for Palestine as well? Israel wouldn't be able to, to maintain dominance and control over Palestine had they not had they have all of the military— They have nuclear weapons. Weapon. Let's say we dropped it all right now. Well, now they, they most certainly—they have nuclear weapons. Nobody's uh, going to fucking I think them. I, th I think we're in agreement here, but I think you are uh, misunderstanding what I'm saying. Because I think I agree with you. Okay, I believe Palestine should have its own independent country, and that what's right. happening I right now in the West Bank is barbaric. State. Are you a two-stater or are you one stater? Um, I, I don't think. I know you said in the past you supported two-state solutions. I, I, so I would say where you're at now. I would say two-state because I don't think one state is practical or could ever happen unless it was under an Israeli government, which I do not want. I think a two-state solution is far more impractical, but that's neither here nor there. What I'm saying is I'm in agreement with you in that I don't think Israel would be able to uh, maintain dominance over Palestine or been able to expand as much as they have over the past several decades without U.S. backing, which yep. uh, which actually further backs up my but, point about but Taiwan. But then the question would be about, so right now, if let's say Israel moved in and they were like, all of this land is ours, we claim it all, nobody can stop us. Now we know that recently Taiwan has gone on a, a diploma, diplomacy beach, uh, uh, basically like blast, and nobody would practically stop them. Nobody would either through alliance purposes or the fact that they have nuclear weapons. So under that situation, are you saying that the international community should just stand down and not do anything because at the end of the day, if, this is this is a, all of that. Yes. If Israel took all of Palestine right now. Said, no, Dylan, I'm not saying that because you need to fucking listen to what I'm talking about. Israel wouldn't be able to expand the reach that they have if they didn't have U.S. backing yes, I'm saying, the past several yes, decades. I, listen I've to the words that, that, that are heard coming you. out of my fucking I heard mouth. You. You're not listening I, I to did, the words that I are heard coming you. out of my mouth. But and now, I said, you, I said, I said that uh -huh. a country, if they cannot guarantee their own sovereignty without help, without yes. support from another country like the United States, empire then they should not be their own country that's exactly what i just fucking argued do you see how that again so america drops the support right now 
you you think this example wouldn't work because America has supported in the past. So even if we dropped, let's say we stopped funding the Iron Dome, we stopped funding everything. We said, we're out, not our issue. We need to rebuild our infrastructure. We need Medicare for all, right? Which I know is something you would support doing, right? We pull out. Israel could do what I'm saying. They, they might do. Just go in there. This is all ours. So what should the international community do then? If the, if the Israeli, okay, Dylan, I'm just going to say it very clearly, and I'm also going to counter that point you just made, because um, it's actually an interesting point. Uh, if, if Israel hadn't had all the supports that they've had over the years, they wouldn't have been able to build up yes, their, their military into the point where it can now do that without further U.S. backing. You, again, are just looking at this isolated situation rather than the complex history of U.S. foreign policy as it relates uh, to Israel in the modern era. Had the United States not provided all of the all of the carrots that we've provided to Israel over the past few decades, they wouldn't be able to just do this today without further U.S. backing. Now, what I'll also say to counter that point is there have been uh, numerous assessments uh, that have been drawn up surrounding um, Israeli security on their northern borders and whether or not they could actually maintain a, sh a stronghold on northern cities within Israel um, if resistance groups began attacking and how long they'd be able to manage those. Um, I mean, there's a reason why uh, the Ben Gurion airport had to shut down for the longest extended portion it's ever been shut down for mm -hmm. uh, during this recent assault because the resistance has grown and it has grown to a point where it can actually threaten um, Israeli defense. And also you had uh, the resistance launch multiple successful uh, rocket strikes into Israel that that passed through the Iron Dome, which also uh, was a new, you know, it, it was it was a new uh, exhibiting of resistance forces so um yeah i i don't think if they if they if they hadn't have had all that support from the u.s empire over the past decade or past several decades they wouldn't be able to do that today okay. but also um i think their support is dwindling as is with u.s support and if u.s support was cut uh the time in which they'd be able to maintain their dominance would be questionable okay um i think the example works but just to be uh diplomatic I'll, I'll, okay. I'll move off of it and say it what about are you you're familiar you with provide any evidence well, as to me, how it works okay i'm moving off of it because this example is easier because you lost be because this you didn't example, provide any evidence do you really to how okay do you really want me to stand here and argue about this for 20 minutes or do you want me to use an example that would be more no, i don't want you to be stand here to for use. 20 minutes and argue about this i want you to accept so that you we, were very wrong in that please, assessment I, because i won't and then we'll have because to talk, argue about this be no because i'm trying to be very informed about this i don't know your ass from your elbow wait i didn't advise those candidates or what do you mean i claimed did you did but okay. you claim to be someone anyway. who's actually informed about yes, this yes i and am again, but if you really want to know your ass okay your elbow. then we'll argue about this for longer my point didn't have to do with american military support and we don't know if without american did. military support whether what was your point what was your point my point was that if a nation can beat and subdue another nation using force or a people specifically or a about israel and people. US support for yes, israel, israel force point? yes my point was that if america was to drop all of its support and all the international backers so it is about military support for israel right yes it is in part well, due you to just this. i'm using, wasn't about well, no, I'm using the my example has to do because my example because yes, this is what i was debating about looks my, you just said it didn't me, have anything you're to do not with letting US me talk you gotta let me finish my well, sentences talking in circles i can't well then it. how, I'm how am i gonna talk how are we gonna go back and forth my statement is that if america dropped its military support for israel right we stopped supporting it which you want to happen right uh, yes, I would love it if the U.S. stopped providing military support for Israel. Okay, wonderful. And so that scenario, we live in that world. We're Audi, right? At that point, now we could say Israel. We could talk about the American, uh, the Spanish-American war in Cuba as a similar example, if we want to move to that one. But my point had to do with just because a larger force, force like Israel can dominate the Palestinian people does not mean it should be able to, that a people should be able to decide on their own if they want to be their own independent country through votes. That's why if California voted to be independent, I'd be in support of it. Same with Texas. A great example of this is if the Spanish-American War happened, right? 1880, uh, 1898. After it was done, Ellen. it was... Yes? 
What? I thought we were sticking to Israel. And you okay, to we'll, keep stay, we'll stick back. to that then. So because I, you said, yes, you, said yes. you were talking about Israel. I, my, I really do believe that if uh, Israel hadn't received all the support they've received over the past several decades, and if they stopped receiving reports or support starting today, mm -hmm. that, uh, well, in the first scenario, they wouldn't be able to exert as much power and have as much con control over Palestine that they currently have. Uh, but B, if they did stop receiving support from the U.S., uh, their Iron Dome would crumble they would run out of rockets. I mean, they Israel ran out of rockets during the Obama administration during one of their assaults on Palestine. And uh, they literally had to ask Obama uh, to, like, to immediately send them more rockets. I mean, so, the, 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 the Israel, Israel is very fragile. I don't think you understand this. Israel I know they're is like, not they're, very they're, fragile. So the, the problem is, in this scenario, let's say Israel they run— Israel is it, very fragile. Let me, they have nuclear weapons. If a force invades, they're going to nuke them, and millions will die. It's a terrible scenario. chemical weapons as well. But how did they get those? With they the support the, of who? With the support of the United States. But let me finish so my statement. What's but, my argument? Let's talk about 1948 then. We can just talk. <laughs> wait, wait, we can just talk 1948. How did they get them, Dylan? How did they get through them? Help, I just told you. Through help of the United States. But let's talk about oh 1948 then. 1948. Israel wins its war of independence. America's not giving them nuclear plans. We're not giving them this. There were individual Americans who went over there. But that has to do with Zionism. That's not directly America coming down like, here's all your soldiers and here's everything and they win their so, quote-unquote war of independence right they use the Belfort declaration as as principle and they're like here we are right there was still a Palestine Israel issue then and my same principle would still apply that if they were able to dominate those people who which they were able already dominate in 1948 when we look at what the what the Lahai was doing to Palestinians massacring them in some instances right that was it right. They're not allowed to just dominate those people. They should get a vote on whether this is the state of affairs they want. Just and we that that's my point I'm trying to get out here. It didn't essentially have to do with American support. And we can remove this from the scenario if you want to and go back to 1948. Um, because it does. I mean, uh, Israel has lost wars to Lebanon. Israel has lost uh, Israel. Literally, people characterize what just happened in the most recent assaults. They characterize that as a loss because Israel had to stop their ground invasion, which they were planning in Gaza. Right. I mean, that, that's exactly what happened. And that's why so many experts on this issue claim that this was actually a loss for Israel. Uh, so. I, I do I do push back on this notion that Israel is some sort of a innately strong country that can uh, that can overpower any of their neighboring countries uh, because they wouldn't be able to they can barely do so with U.S. support with decades and decades and decades of U.S. support billions of dollars per year um, and they wouldn't be able to there's there's no doubt in my mind there's no doubt in my mind that they wouldn't be able to uh, do that and they wouldn't have been able to expand their their uh, you know, their country uh, to all the settlements they have today if it weren't for decades of U.S. support. I mean, do you really honestly believe that if it wasn't for decades of U.S. support that they wouldn't have been able to do that? Uh, I do think that they would not be able to do what the, the, Israel today would not look how it looks. It'd probably look closer to 1948. That, okay, that's so you agree view. with me? Well, no, because my position would still hold for the Palestinians within Israeli territory 1948. My position would still work. Is that those no, Palestinians should still be able to decide they shouldn't be made refugees out of their no. own ancestral homeland? No, because the, the, the principal argument we had here surrounding Israel was that a country should not be able to stand on their own and be uh, considered a sovereign nation if it has to rely directly upon another country for the majority of their military support or their economic aid. Uh, that's what we were talking about. And you just so what about Cuba? my point. Then we can move on to Cuba. Fine. Listen, for for, for, listen, for, for no, diplomatic reasons, finish. I'll just say you're right. And we can move on. Make a point. My chat okay. was about to get really excited. I was about to finish. Uh, you just made my point that if Israel, you said if Israel hadn't have had decades of U.S. support, it would look closer to what it looked like in 1948, which actually proves my point that we were having from the start occurred of this. Occurred is occurred. My point had to do with the fact that even in 1948, it would still stand that there would be Palestinians displaced by settler colonialism. Would you agree with that, right? And that's my issue, that that shouldn't be decided just by the military force of Israel asserting itself in 1948, that the people of Palestine should be able to vote about their ancestral homelands, which they were being expelled from and turned into refugees. 
that it's was not a matter of them voting. I mean, it's a matter at that point of international law and the disregard for it. So it isn't just. So what you're saying is it's not just uh, that a nation should be able to defend itself or people should have to defend itself if it wishes to rule itself. And it should not. Uh, in that instance, it would be relying on other countries for support. That would be the international community getting involved. No, yeah, that's that, just relying on international law, which the is, law, not, which the, is supported not, the, by not the strongholding of other countries, not the military support of other countries. That's just the rule of law. So it should be a law that no one follows because the UN is a paper tiger. Because in, under the scenario, there needs to be countries that go in to enforce international law. Without it, law is just a paper tiger. A law that is unenforced is no law at all. It's just pieces of writing on paper. We saw that play down in Yugoslavia, for example. No, I don't think that uh, I don't think that you necessarily have to have military intervention to guarantee the upholding of international law. You do not? So what do you think would happen? And it, by the way, so would you say sanctions is then a okay way to support then? If, if, the, if the international community sanctioned Israel, then that would be okay. But that would not be the use of other countries to prop up Palestine. I think every non-military uh, example of, um, you know, like diplomatic means should be carried out before you are implementing sanctions that directly impact the citizenry of a country uh, or before you engage in military intervention. But anyways, so, I mean, we're kind of getting into another argument okay. now, but I mean, I mean, I won that argument. So what else do you have for me? <laughs> you know, the ones who have to declare victory and prove to everyone that they won are usually not the ones that do the best, right? Deontay oh, Wilder, Adrian I literally, Broner. I was literally explaining to you how wrong you were. And then like you were the like, Adrian I don't Broner want to sit here and debate this for 20 more Twitch, minutes. Man. And then I was like, well, I mean. I beat Manny could. Pacquiao. I We're beat him. I beat Manny Pacquiao. I don't care what anybody anywhere. says. I beat him. Because the judges are wrong. The judges. I did. And then I was like, you know what? If Dylan wants to sit here and try to provide a new argument, then sure, I'll yes. hear him out. But did I hear you out? And did you provide a, I mean, yes, I did. And did you provide a new argument? No, you didn't. And we're sitting at wait, the same exact so are you saying, you wait, wait, you had to secede the point that Palestine and the Palestinians in 1948 would need international support from other countries backing international law for there to be anything done about Israel. Without other countries using force, people aren't going to do shit. The state needs to use force to make people follow laws. If not, it's just writing on papers, social norms and social norms are not going to dictate that Israel doesn't abuse Palestinians. Dylan, Dylan, the the primary argument we're having was that a country should not be allowed to stand on its own without military. Specifically, we we're talking about military support from another country, right? That's mm -hmm. what we talked yes. about from the beginning. Which... Okay, yes. Okay, so is the upholding of international law guaranteeing that, uh, you know, international law is upheld? That's not the occurred. same thing okay. as providing direct military support for an imperialist country uh, to, you know, take over Actually, a, 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 another sovereign. Actually, in many sovereign. ways it is. An example is the no, Scarborough Shoal. Not. The China, in China way, lost in an international or... court when it came to the Scarborough Shoal. They ignored it and kept doing what they were doing. So... But you exactly. want to know and why, why it failed? We tried before you engage yes. in military So what would you do then instead? If military support is the last thing, what would you do when it comes in 1948, Israel-Palestine? What would your strategy as the chief, let's say the UN is actually something at this point, like, like actually doing shit. Like, what would you do? What, what would your means then if it wouldn't be the military would have no involvement? What, what would your well, message be? Because I don't see any other option besides the threat at some point of military force. I was re respecting the will of the international experts who, uh, you know, were, were guiding the uh, location of where Jewish people were to be uh, guaranteed a homeland, uh, post-war homeland. I would have respected the will of that international community that were alleged to have been experts on this, that was made up of also, uh, I believe, two members from the United States, which said that Palestine should not be the explicit guaranteed homeland of the Jewish people. I would have respected that. And do what about it? I, w I would have said that Palestine, if, if these international experts, things. the Palestinian people are all saying that 
uh, Palestine should not become the homeland of the Jewish people. I would not have issued a, a, you know, executive declaration that we are going to uh, form a new home for the Jewish people in Palestine. Okay, so talk is one thing, right? Neville Chamberlain talked a lot, and what happened? You just right? asked me what I would have done, yeah, and yeah, I told and, you. and you said you would have said this, and you would have said that, and you would have said this. No, and this I said would have I wouldn't have position. guaranteed a president, uh, an executive declaration, which guaranteed the Jewish people homeland in Palestine. That's okay. how they were guaranteed their homeland in Palestine. So, are you are you talking about the United States presidential, not not the Belfort Declaration? I'm talking about the U.S. support for the for the okay. Belfort Declaration. Okay, the U.S. support for the Belfort Declaration. So that would have happened with or without the United States. That was done in in 1917 as a nope. way. It was actually anti-Semitic. Nope. Wait, no, nope. it was anti-Semitic. No, I'm saying it wouldn't have. I, I'm saying there's a. There, it's questionable as to whether or not it would have happened but without the British US did support. it. The British did it. And they but you they prompted well, right? they you needed well, US, but they you needed a you, you needed you did everyone not need US no it. you did not need because the thing is we had the Sykes Pico agreement we had the think McMahon had, and Hussein Dylan, Dylan Dylan think if you had a making stuff up US force a competent executive branch that would have done exactly what we did in Iraq right uh, you sway member states to support your foreign policy aims and you would have gotten them to not support the the effort to create a homeland for the Jewish people in uh, in Palestine, but I don't even know how we got here because we were initially talking about whether or not a country could stand up for itself based on uh, you know their lack of military armament coming from another country, and you literally made the claim. You literally made the claim that Israel would be able to stand up for itself and expand its own territory. Yes, without right, direct support. Right from- now, yes, in 1948. Whoa, wait, Dylan, wait. Dylan, yes, but that was what I was talking about. Situation. Then we moved it. You're looking we at this in an isolated it. situation. Fine, can we what move on to a different example which doesn't have your problem with it? History. Can we move over to the like, nine, Look, okay, then let's look at totality of history. Oh. Cuba, 19, oh, it was 1898. Cuba, American Spanish War, right? After the American Spanish War, there was a lot of discussion about whether Cuba would become an American state, its own thing, or whatever, right? Now, let's say you or whatever anybody in the world, and you see the United States say, you know what? Yeah, Cuba is a state now. Cubans, obviously, many of them would not be happy. Maybe they revolt, but if we just swiped away the Spanish military, there's not much they can do. So let's say the Americans beat the shit of Spanish rebels, just like we beat the shit of native rebels multiple times. Would that, the might make right argument apply there, or we just move over to native tribes in the United States? So you literally said that uh, Israel today would be able to okay, so uh, exert their question. dominance across Palestine. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. You said that you, at the start of your statement, you just said that, yes, you believe Israel would be able to currently, as it, st- as it is today, exert their dominance yes. across Palestine, right? That's what you said. Yes. So I would question, what arms does Israel have to do that that are not directly provided by or funded in part by the U.S. empire? Well, number one, if we stop funding them, that doesn't make all their arms disappear, right? They still have guns that we gave them before, but it's not just us. Oh, no, no, I it's understand also- that. I'm not a fucking dumbass, you piece okay, of shit. I'm, I'm saying in a hypothetical situation, you're saying that Israel uh, would be able to do this without U.S. support. Yeah. But the U.S. has provided support for all of this yes. stuff. That's right my now, we're talking argument. about Rye going forward. Okay. That's can we my argument. Move, can we move on to something else, or do you want to keep yelling about this? No, I'd, I'd love to move on. You were the one who wanted okay. to continue talking about okay. this. Now, could you answer my question about Cuba? I'm going to be honest. I didn't care what you said because I was going to push back on that, so I went and got water. You want to say it again? <sighs> okay. In 1898, we fought the Spanish, right? And we beat them pretty bad, right? The uh, start of that war is still hotly debated today. And after the end of it, there was two debates in the United States, what to do with Cuba and what's to do with the Philippines, because those were the two pieces of territory we were able to wrangle from them. Obviously, the Philippines never became a state, and that was never even up for debate. It was going to become America's biggest and, like, most pronounced—a lot of people say this is, like, the start of American colonialism overseas. I disagree. I think it started before, but it's one of the most cited examples. But Cuba, many Americans actually wanted Cuba to become a state. And to be honest, there's not much Cubans could have done to stop that. We just obliterated the Spanish military presence in Cuba, which stopped Americans from going in. So the Americans go into Cuba. 
we get move Spanish soldiers. United States, let's say, they declared Cuba as a state now. Many Cubans don't like that. Is the fact that they can't push out the Americans because they don't have the means to do so at that point, and let's say 20, 30 years passes, we're occupying that. Is that, a, is that a righteous or okay occupation to the international community to do nothing just because might makes right there and they don't have the means to defend themselves without the help of Spain? If, if we had called them if we had called them a state yeah we declared that they were a state because there was a debate about that in 1898 well did they become a state no I'm, I'm asking in the scenario that we did declare them a state we were like they are a state and the cubans obviously would not be happy about that then what they never became a state yes i'm asking okay i i know cuba's not a state but i'm saying in 1898 after the spanish-american war when that debate was going know, on but Dylan, Dylan, I literally just spent like 20 minutes this talking a hypothetical. to you a real world example with yes, Israel and we're moving and Palestine. To a, we're moving to a hypothetical. You hypothetical because you because can't, you can't engage with a hypothetical. Wrong. Okay. So you want to engage what in What do you mean it was proven wrong? This actually, this actually was one of the debate tactics. When I was prepping for my debate with Vosh, uh, this was one of the What's debate tactics the that everyone told me not to engage with because everyone said, you know, okay. when Vosh begins engaging in these hypothetical scenarios, you need to tear, this turn is it a, back to this the is real a thing world that was example. that could really you need to happen. Back to the real world example. This is a real thing and that could have happened. Are not material, but Dylan. This, it was material. There was an actual debate about it, right? So my question to you it is: nineteen. 89, I mean 98, there was a debate about whether this would happen. And my stance would be, we shouldn't just make them a state because we have more power than them and they can't defend themselves without Spanish I help. I you wrong with a real world example. Now you're no, dealing you in hypothetical. No, you didn't. Now you're, now you're coping. <laughs> Why are you moving? Just answer the hypothetical. What's so wrong? What's wrong with the hypothetical? What's wrong with it? I don't dictate arguments based upon hypotheticals. I act upon real world examples. How do you have conversations then? I'm not going to engage with your hypothetical. So you're saying Catalonia should not be its independent country if it wants to be? I'm going to be honest. I don't know enough about that to speak to it, and I also don't speak on things that I don't know about. Okay. So I'm not going to what talk about, about that either. What about a Kurdish state? Kurdish people have wanted a nation for very long. Dylan, don't even get me started on this. Don't even get me. You just made me so excited. This is a good real-world example that I'm actually informed on. Do um, you want to talk about that? Sure. Why not? Okay. So... The Kurdish people could not guarantee their own sovereign entity until there was U.S. support prevalent in the region. The U.S. now claims to own and occupy, this is per Dana Strau, who now works for the Biden administration on U.S. Uh -huh. uh, Syria foreign policy, that the U.S. claims to own one third of Syria, own and occupy. Uh, they are mm -hmm. doing that with the help of the Kurds, but the Kurds could not do that on their own. They mm -hmm. had to have U.S. support. They couldn't do that on their own. Okay, so what you're saying is because since they don't have enough power to start a rebellion against Iran, uh, Iraq, uh, the Turkish government in Syria, because they're a people uh, displaced by borders, because the borders of the Middle East were cut up in a very, uh, let's say, um, hasty manner, right? They should not have a state. So that's, that's your reasoning. I'm saying I'm that not asking Syria about current American. Country, I'm asking should it be its own I country? No, I don't think that the mm. Kurds would be able to uh, would be able to secede and create their own region without the support well, no. of the U.S. Yeah, or another. But why? Imperial why power. does that support? Why does that remove a people's right to self determination? If the if it has to be violent, there's been many many peoples who have been dominated by superior military powers. Native Americans is a great example. I would have supported international support for Native Americans struggling to maintain their independence against Amer uh, American Manifest Destiny. It's, th this is the primary basis of my argument, though. If you can't support your own state, right? If you can't support your own state, then you shouldn't be trying to call yourself a sovereign nation because you mm. don't have the means to defend yourself. You don't have the so means to create a social fabric American... that will stand up to another country that is currently, huh. uh, you know, is, is, made, is made, the, made up of the land that you claim to want to occupy. You're American, right? Yes. You do know the France supported us during the American Revolution. Without French support, there's a good chance we would have stayed a British colony. I mean... Sure.
So would you have rejected French support and then had the American Revolution fail and stay a, a member of the crown to maybe... Problems. I have many problems with the way in, the, in which this country was founded. Yes. So, you would, have, so you would have rejected French support? Not, not necessarily. I just have many problems with the way this country was founded in general. But if you want to keep talking about Syria, because I do concede I have problems with the way this country was founded. Um, you know, we can keep talking about I Syria. I didn't say, I, number one, that. I didn't say Syria. I said Kurds. And Kurds exist well, <laughs> across multiple borders. <laughs> Where would a Kurdish state be in part, in part located? In part Dylan? Syria, in Iran, in Turkey, in Iraq, right? And I believe that if those and people... And where are they currently occupying? They, they, the SDF, which is majority Arab, are occupying a part of northeastern Syria. Correct. The so majority of its forces are Arab, by the way, so it would not just be a Kurdish state, by the way. It, it, but it, they, they want the Kurdish state. That's what they that's, want. That's not what they want. They do. The, okay, the SDF has that's accepted. That's what this whole agreement with the U.S. No, providing no, for what there is. No, that's not. The SDF has wanted to negotiate with Assad to get very similar to the K, something very similar to the Kurdistan regional government of northern Iraq. They've said this in multiple press releases. Uh, their, their supreme commanders have said it. Multiple people in SDC have said this multiple times that they do not seek independence from Syria. They seek something similar to a regional government the way, say, Catalonia has its own regional government, or they say that and the without, KRG— without because they there are yes there are though many people uh who make up that group who do want a sovereign state you uh, well, you I, I, i'd imagine I, you would I assume see, would I, I, on that, yes right? i assume there are people who have many yes. different diverse political opinions in northern syria and for years for years that has been the primary debate surrounding yes. uh the kurds is creating a yes. kurdish state correct yes. yeah the last time okay. they tried so what i'm saying is okay. you have this uh you have this group that mm -hmm in no way, shape, or form, could be occupying the land that it currently occupies without the help of the U.S. Now, the U.S. did them dirty and said in a, in a statement that we, uh, rec Dana Shrouds said, we recognize this as one-third of Syria that we now own and occupy. They specifically targeted okay. this land, not because it's Kurdish land or because it's land that this uh, coalition wants to target and gain control of. They targeted it in their own words because it is the hydrocarbon and wheat rich region of Syria and they are going to cut off Bashar al-Assad from their raw resources such as those and that's exactly what they're doing. They're taking tankers of oil from this region across the border into Iraq. They're smuggling it into Iraq. Stuff, this is exactly what they're doing. There's a Delaware based uh, natural gas firm that has been sanctioned by the U.S. Treasury Department to operate in this region of Syria. It's what they're doing. There's no okay. other way to spin it. That didn't respond to anything I just said. You just basically... It does, Dylan. How? Because okay. you, your primary argument is that they should be able to have their own state yes. without support but I don't, but wait, 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 my question didn't have to do with any of that, okay? I'm All saying, of that was yes. important. I don't believe that your ability to use power no. and force no. dictate alone dictates your ability to be a people that should rule themselves. That is why I support Kurdish independence because the Kurds across every country they are, they are in right now, they are treated absolutely god-awful. In Iran, they're mowed down when they protest. In Syria, they were mowed down by both Bashar al Assad's father and Bashar al-Assad himself in 2004 after the football protests. In Turkey, they were called Mountain Turks. They had their language banned and their children are shot by security forces. In Iraq, they got the thing that was closest to uh, the Kurdish liberation in a way with the KRG government, but the government of Iraq still went in Turk Kirk Kirk and it was not a really good time when that happened. And so the Kurdish people have looked at the situation across all borders and said, we are treated like shit any other time when it is not a Kurd making policies because the other people fear Kurds. They think we're, we're rebellious. They think we're disgusting. They think we're bad. They think we're a threat to Arabs. We deserve our own state. And I do not believe just because they're a minority or because they are cut across multiple borders that that struggle that they have should be dictated just by the means of not being able to take on one of the most powerful militaries in the world in the Turkish government, for example. Okay, so um, that's, I mean, that's your reason for supporting uh, a Kurdish state, I guess. But my, my argument here is that a Kurdish state would not be able to stand without U.S. support. And also, it ties back into the original so, conversation quite nicely we we're having, actually. What if I don't care? Um, because, because, what if you don't believe that?
No, no, no. I said, what if I don't care? Well, I mean, because I don't care because I do not because I don't believe the argument we're having. I don't believe that the American revolution. Wait, well, okay. I, well, the thing is the it's same. Okay. Wait, let me finish. Oh, it's okay. No, you got to. Okay. Let... Actually, I was in the middle of something, so I'm going to finish. But, okay, you finish. Um, Fine. It ties quite nicely back into the initial argument we are having, right? Uh -huh. uh, that if if a country cannot stand on its own without military support from another country, then. I mean, it, it, at that point, uh, it can't call itself a sovereign entity, sovereign nation. And that's exactly what's happening in Syria right now. That's so, exactly what's happening my in thing Syria. Is, I don't think that just because another country comes in and assists somebody and they struggle for liberation or even if it's for uh, 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 self-beneficiary means like the United States is not doing it because there's some angel. I know there are Americans who support the Kurdish struggle. There's a lot of reasons why we got involved in northern Syria. Uh, multiple strategic reasons. There were some who, of course, saw what happened at Sinjar and the public outcry was enormous. But my main issue doesn't have to do with any of that. It has to do with the fact that I don't believe that just because they cannot we gotta let me finish okay i let you finish when you told you said you wanted to finish i do not believe that just because it could not hold up by themselves that they should not, that their rebellion is not correct that they should not be able to rule themselves it's why i believe the french should have supported the american revolution it's why i believe that uh, that the the kurdistan regional government has a right to exist and has gen greatly benefited the kurds of northern iraq so did operation provide comfort and that's the same reason why i believe that the sdf will hopefully get their regional government will, which will stop more incidents like the 2004 Klamishli riots the same way I will support Dylan, I would have supported Dylan. Native American tribes against Americans going in and shooting Dylan. Native American children women and men Dylan we are dealing with the modern American US Empire Okay. And the modern US American Empire is the only reason why this coalition of forces in Northeast Syria is currently occupying that region. Okay. If it weren't for the U.S., and, and they I would say, not I don't be able care. to do that. The U.S.'s primary aim, though, and every time we do something like this, is to balkanize a country. That's what I'm getting at here. Uh, I know you reject this notion that the U.S. acts in every, and the modern U.S. empire acts oh. in every uh, imaginable instance as it relates to intervention or, uh, you know, or, or military backing in a way that only serves the interests of the U.S. empire, military, industrial, complex, corporate elite, transnational corporations. I make that claim. I make that argument. And I feel very strongly about that. And you can see that that's exactly what's happening in Syria. The aim is to balkanize the country. Okay. So let me ask you a question then. Why did that not happen in Iraq once the Kurdistan regional government formed? Because that was I, due I to American to creation. That. Well, that, that is a, a perfect example. And that's the exact same thing the SDF is I trying mean, to create. An example so, I can't really engage with because so I'm not if, familiar if with you're it. Not, well, then, but this is also literally right next to them. And this is what they're looking towards as an example. What happened was that— what, well, I, don't even know what, I don't even know what year that is. What year what is? When you claimed that was created. Okay, the Kurdistan regional government was officially created post— the the Iraq invasion, but it was unofficial for a long. Let me but it, it's, it was it's, unofficial. So no, 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 because me, because it's a regional government. The yeah. U.S. is helping yes. the the Kurds and other minorities that make up those forces occupy that region and try to create a balkanized that's, country. That's, that's, that's what they're doing in the Idlib province as well. No, they're trying to look, create look. their own territory within that region. It's the, not like a not government that is that's acting not what's under happening. Syria. They're not the, acting the under Syria. They is don't not allow the people in that this. region you to don't vote in Syrian elections. You're talking about. Yes, because, very yes, because they are, because right now they're in conflict with the Syrian government, the SDF, and multiple fronts. And so, you what, wouldn't well, be listen, able to listen, occupy listen, it if it weren't for the finish. U.S. Yes, I'm happy they supported them. Okay, now let me no. finish. So let me here's finish. my point, Jackson Hinkle. If I'm not listening to you attacking, until you let me finish. I don't. I don't care. I don't attacking, care. I don't care until you, you let me finish. Attacking, you have you to let me finish. I can't attacking, talk to you if you're constantly angry. And I'm happy about it. Oh my God, Jackson. Okay, you didn't have. I don't care. 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 Nobody. Okay, now he's muted. Wonderful. He's muted. I'm muted. We're both muted.
You finished? Okay, you were muted too. So nobody, so nothing was productive there, okay? So the SDF is not looking to be its own independent country. It has never claimed to be its own independent country. It is not doing anything that would need, be in the means to get its own independent country. It's not starting up embassies around the world. Right now. It's not, what? What is it doing right now? It wants to be its own regional government similar to the KRG. What is it doing right now? It is occupying a part of Syria until because they want leverage in negotiations with the Syrian government. They're occupying they part ask, of Syria. Okay. That they no claim and no Assad claim won't to negotiate with them. Syria. Assad rejects negotiations with them. They specifically have done negotiations with all these people. Because they're, and they're let a me force finish. That is let me to finish. The why country. they are that you have no proof that the SDF has that guide. You could say they're literally occupying the country right okay, now. They're not because, trying to yes, create a mutual benefit agreement. It is very clear. It is very clear. They know they don't want mutually right beneficial agreement. Of course they're doing they exactly don't. What they the want. They wanted them you to don't do. know what you're talking about. Uh, minerals. You don't that is exactly know what you're happening. talking about. Dylan, the SDF Dylan, has never Dylan, declared this. They, they have never pursued this. Because, because a regional government, which let's say that the Assad government doesn't have troops have in, would, that's, what they're, that's what they're... But they... That then they're not going to get a regional government unless they have military power. That's what happened in the KRG. They, they wanted That's a what happened. Government that bad. Why wouldn't the U.S. come in if they were if they were such like fucking him on a humanitarian mission there? Why wouldn't they come and and for, they they can easily force Assad to do a lot of things right now? We cannot why force, force them to do this. The, in can fact, I can tell you about this. This happened already. Dylan, what you're talking about Dylan, already Dylan, happened. Dylan, Dylan, if they can force their occupation of one third of the country and steal the raw minerals out of that one third of the country. Don't you think they could have conceded power and forced a, a they, mutually beneficial regional government agreement? The they could have, but they didn't is, want to the, because they wanted to You're not listening. You don't know what you're talking steal about. Their oil How can you be so clueless? You said the Syrian government you said and you knew a lot Assad about this. Their raw you minerals. said you That's didn't exactly know any. How do you say you know a lot about this and then know nothing That's about exactly Northern what Syria? Happened. But right, okay, right, let me just ask Assad, you wait, no, you, you just no, no, you just got your whole spiel. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not listening. I'm not, I gotta speak. I have to speak. Okay, I don't care. I'm a beta. Anyway, I don't care. I'm a beta. I don't care. I'm a beta. You're just muted now, so I'm gonna talk to my own audience. Okay, audience. So here's the thing the thing that Jackson Hinkle won't recognize is that. They have tried to get into negotiations with Assad before, and they have been banned by Assad and kicked out by Assad from having these negotiations where they want to talk to them about the future of Syria, creating that regional government. And the thing is, if the SDF declared independence as its own country, Turkey would invade them and slaughter them in seconds because the biggest threat that Turkey sees from Syria is not only from Bashar al-Assad and they want to challenge him by backing jihadists in, in, in Syria, but is also by the idea, the concept of Kurdish independence flourishing in Syria would be so terrifying to them as a people who are so fundamentally afraid, so fundamentally afraid of Kurdish rights, they would immediately invade. So not only do they not seek this, if they wished to seek it, unless we had the best, unless we decided to move tons and tons of troops, equipment, I mean, just make the border what South and North Korea looks like, which we have done the opposite of doing by disarming the border, it would be not only not in our interest to do this, it would be impossible to do this. Turkey would never allow this. I'll unmute when okay. he's done talking. I've unmuted. There you go. Okay. Now that can neither of you? us now that neither of us has gained, you can ask your questions. Okay. So if the US can take over one third of the country, the resource rich region of the country, uh, with the help of these forces, why would they not be able to create a regional government? They, because Assad has stopped them from coming to negotiations multiple times. They have offered to come. Assad has stopped them because Assad wants direct military control of northeastern Syria. Uh, yes, because it is Syria, and it would still be a part of Syria under a regional government. Well, yes, and but also, that's, also, mm, also, let me just finish. That's not how regional but governments yes, work. No, it would be. If it's that's a regional not, government under no, Syria, no, 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 it no. would be. That's not how also, the, you don't know. Why would, he have, why, would, why would he give up the resource-rich region, and why would he do any of that uh, if he doesn't have to? Okay, so the first thing is, if you look at the KRG, they have their own military, they have the Peshmerga. So, the, and the Peshmerga... Is backed. The Peshmerga, and again, I, I, yes, and I don't care if it's US-backed, that's fine for me, okay? 
I, again, I don't care. I'm not, if you, you called me a bread tuber earlier. I'm not a bread tuber, okay? I don't, I don't pretend to be a bread tuber, okay? Oh I, don't, I don't need to be, live in the delusional world where U.S. bad all the time and act like a walking gray zone article, okay? I don't need oh, to be. Why, why, why is the U.S. backing them? The U.S. is backing them because we want the Iraq to be our ally and because it's strategically beneficial. And we're why backing is it them. Strategic and beneficial? It's strategically beneficial because we have interest against Iran. And and we don't like Iran. What what do you mean? And what, you you actually don't know what I'm referring to. What's, Two things. Okay. What's the other thing? Tell me. We're we're cutting off Syria from their vital resources, the resource rich region of Syria, and we're stealing we're it on top of that. How by supporting the Peshmerga? No, no. By supporting the occupation of northeast Syria. Okay. And also, I don't care. You don't care about that. I don't that care we've because that, wait, wait, country. Well, no, no. The reason I don't care is because off from the government. The okay, I, but here's well, the other listen, thing. Here's well, the other gotta, thing. Wait, wait. You got to let me elaborate on thing. that. Or are you just gonna make here's me look like thing. Satan? Okay? Here's the other thing. Jesus. Okay, you can elaborate. You can elaborate when I finish my second point. The second thing is that we're all doing it, and this is according again to the U.S. State Department. They said this is in a statement. We're doing this in an effort to weaken Assad. Okay. Now you can go. Okay. The reason I don't care is because it is the people of Northeastern Syria who are currently rebuilding their territory. This is the same reason the Spanish government doesn't like Catalonian independence. Syria. It's because... There's what? Well, no, let me, you fi said let me finish. You got. You got to let me finish. I'm going to just have to mute you again. Okay, you got to let me finish. You got to let me finish. Defend the, the point that the you United, made. Wait, wait. The Cur we are giving them money for the oil. You do know that, right? We're stealing the, the oil The from oil Syria. companies are giving money to the SDF and the SDC for the oil. That money is then being used by the government of northeastern Syria, whether you want to call so it whatever now you want. Let me finish. Force, let me to finish. Syria. Okay, you're just muted. I don't care anymore. If you're not going to let me talk, I'll just mute you and I'll just talk, okay? So we are buying the oil from northeastern syria and they are right now rebuilding cities they are rebuilding territory they are trying to provide public services and i believe if those are the people who stand on that territory they should be the people who determine what happens with those resources just like in catalonia even though catalonian independence would be against u.s interests and the catalonians have the majority of the resources i held the same position for the native americans when it comes to the united states when we were fighting our wars with them even though they were standing on tons of resources they should have been the ones who dictated what happened to those resources because they're the ones who live there okay can you hear me yes so when you say that we're paying for the resources you said that yes. we are paying the forces that are helping us occupy the region we're not paying uh the syrian government that no, resource not the syrian Meaning government the SDC, the yes. The SDS, SDC, SDS. I know. I yes. know you dumb fuck. That's what I just said. No, you don't know We're the We're not paying <laughs> the Syrian government. We're not paying the Syrian yep. government that money. So the Syrian people are losing their raw resources due to these occupying forces that wouldn't be able to be there without the help of the U.S. empire. And, right, they're, 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 it's just going back into, it's being reinvested in the occupation. Now, again, I'm not entirely familiar with the makeup of the uh of the of the situation in catalonia uh -huh. now is catalonia this is a question for you is catalonia being entirely backed up and funded their their you know regional entity are they completely backed uh and wouldn't be able to call themselves a regional entity and wouldn't be able to even you know try to fight for uh uh you know self-determination for their own land if it wasn't for a major imperial power um, would it, it's, it's hard to say because the Catalonia independence movement has been long, it's been violent, but, um, I don't think anyone's going to get involved in Spanish internal affairs unless there's a, a, a huge international backlash to some terrible thing the Spanish does. Okay. So, I mean, I don't even know too much about that. And I just picked apart your fucking wait, argument. No, with it. It's because wait, you same. don't know what you're, t okay. What happened? The problem is that I don't believe just because they have guns and they can shoot people and they win that that determines whether people should or shouldn't be independent. 
right? I believe if Catalonians want to be independent, then they should be able to be independent, whether or not they have the military strength to do that. But but you're saying that in Syria, it's Wait, similar to Cat. You're I, saying in Syria, oh my God. it's similar. I did not think of this Syria, before. It's, you said in Syria, Assad it's similar to Catalonia. because of Iranian and Russian intervention. If it wasn't because of the Russian oh, and Iranian governments, Syria, the government would have to, collapsed. You know, let me talk. No, you're not. So, do you support talk. that, or are you against that? I didn't hear because I was trying to make my point because you got so butthurt when I <laughs> when I interrupted you. So I was going to keep trying to talk. In Syria, you said that it's similar to Catalonia, but in Syria, they are only there and only able to occupy and only able to steal those resources and pay them to the occupying forces because of the U.S. In Catalonia, it's much different because it is a completely it's a completely you know I I would imagine an indigenous population that you could not prove is being backed by any imperial force. It's a very different situation. So you're you're okay with the Russians and Iranians backing the government and their backing being the reason why they survive? There's a difference between backing a defensive operation and backing an defensive. offensive imperialist operation. Do you operation. believe that the bombing by the Russian government of a bunch of hospitals, they did four hospitals in 12 hours, do you believe that was defensive? Like those medical patients were like carrying AKs or something? I mean, are you talking about in Syria? Yes, they bombed multiple hospitals. In fact, a lot of people were fearful. Were those fearful. hospitals occupied by the White Helmets? Are you actually going to defend the bombing of hospitals in Syria? Please were they, were they occupied by the White Helmets? No. Assad has done many things I disagree no, and with. And who but cares they if they were the occupied White by the White Helmets? It doesn't change because the fact the that there were civilians in a, those buildings. A white, do you know who the White Helmets are? I don't care. I don't wait, 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 wait. Listen. They're not so, civilians, Dylan. You, they're not civilians. So do you support wait, there's asking. not just in white helmets cases, in there. There's Dylan, there's civilians in those you, hospitals. Dylan, oh Dylan, my you god. Concede? You're a Dylan, fucking you, war crime supporter. Jesus Christ, I can't Dylan, believe it. Dylan. Yeah. Dylan, I know you think this is a really good gotcha. Yeah, but it do is. you concede do you concede that in many cases? Uh, military forces in Syria have overtaken, completely overtaken, gotten rid of civilians in certain territories and regions within Syria and filled hospitals and schools with like military operations. This has happened in also the Gaza Strip, yes. This has happened in many countries. This is like a normal thing that so happens. So would you have supported... Asking, is it, is it, are these hospitals controlled these, by... These hospitals were confirmed to have civilian casualties after the fact. Russia doesn't even deny this. Okay, then I oppose that. Okay. Right, because if, if this was... A, because if your thing is... If you're so Dylan, angry at the White Helmets, you would have to hold this position the about Hamas. Who is the right. aggressor here? Is it the is it the covert Bashar al Assad is the aggressor because he's the oh, one who no, oh, wait let no, me finish no, let no. me finish let me finish no, you don't even you no, gotta let me define no. if you don't let me say who funded well, let the me Syrian finish. dirty war let me finish who funded the let Syrian me order, finish dirty war? let me finish my statement or you're never gonna get an answer okay Bashar al Assad began to shoot his people while they were protesting this is nothing new he did it in 2004 and he did it in 2011. And he has tortured children, done many things. This started, the Syrian civil war started because the people started to rise up and then the parts of the army, of the Syrian army, defected. Then international players and the United States, Saudi Arabia, uh, America, with uh, Timber Sycamore, and many of this stuff started to funnel what they, uh, what they wanted to, to rebel groups, right? right. But... but the Syrian civil war started, and then, of course, Assad got supported from Russia and Iran, and they, boom, there's your Syrian civil war. And then ISIS, and of course. Operations. Right? So, so who started but, the protests? Or who, I so, shouldn't say who started so, the protests, but who expanded the protests, funded covert PSYOP operations to the point where it reached wait, the level it reached? Those protesters were getting shot despite, or in, wait, wait, are you saying we supported, like, we, we like, what, what did we do to the protesters? What, what did we give them? We, we, we did the same thing that we do here in the United States internally when we have discontent amongst popular groups. You have covert operations that take place what covert that, either operations? Promote, that either promote or try to tear apart uh, popular uprisings to foment regime change or to splinter groups. What covert operation did we Who, do? Wait, let me finish my question. You don't even know my question yet. Okay. No, you're going to talk about specifically relating to protests in, in the Middle East, I'd imagine. Well, yes, but you didn't let me finish my question. What's, what's my question about those protests, right? 
So are you alleging that before the protesters were shot, you were funneling like weapons and bombs and stuff in there through Timber Sycamore and that Assad started like, this is the second part, which you didn't, I don't think you alleged, but the second part of my question would be, even if that was the case, does that, is that okay then for Assad to mow down protesters? Because Russia and other governments have done similar things all over the world when it comes to like supporting protest movements against their opposition. But that doesn't mean that gives a red light to mow down protesters. You go and you try to do covert operations to deal with the international governments doing that. That doesn't mean you start shooting protesters. Um, did you say in 2004? Well, there was the 2004 Qamishli riots, and then there was the 2011 protest. 2004 has to do with northeastern Syria. That's why was the Saudi, Kurds don't, don't trust even, was Assad. Was Assad president in 2004? Yes. He I don't think he was even... Yes, he was. During that? Yes. Was he? Yes. I, I promise you he was... No, you're right. Um, Hafez so, al-Assad died in, I think, 2000. So what I'm saying is that the, this is just, a, I mean, it's an objective fact. This is like a common tactic that's used by the U.S. Dude. Through covert yes. operations. So show bolster, me the evidence of what I asked for. We bolster propagandistic uh, campaigns to try and tear apart either sovereign governments, uh, democratically yeah, elected governments. I acknowledge government. we do that. Now, okay. show me evidence. And Syria specifically? Well, yes, that's what we're talking about. We've done so through the White Helmets. Okay. So you're saying we were funding the White Helmets before Assad started mowing them down? Um, I, 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 that's what I'm asking about. Because that was whether or not because Assad the question, was the first person yes. to start this or not. Yes. Well, okay, think about this. Think about this. If you have a force within your country that's being backed up by, uh, you know, fucking a U.S. empire that has obviously ulterior motives, which I don't think you would disagree with me on. We have many then motives, yeah. That, that stem far beyond providing humanitarian support for a just cause within a country. Of course. Um, I would argue that's usually the least of our motives. That's the least important of our motives in any given intervention that we face or PSYOP operation we begin. Okay. So why is it, you think, that the U.S. would be providing support for these groups? Why is it, you think, that uh, the Obama administration, for example, would allow ISIS to run rampant within Syria. Why is it okay. you think that we would do any of this sort of stuff? So, it all has a covert operation at the in, in place, so and it's it's. I will I mean, answer all of your questions once you answer mine. Well, ask your question again. Okay. My question was because we were trying to find out who's the aggressor, right? And. Bashar al-Assad mowed down protesters, tortured protesters. This is nothing new. This is nothing disputed, okay? Now, you're alleging that we, we, we threw all this stuff at here. I don't doubt that yeah. through Timber Sycamore and multiple things, we have funded a lot of organizations in Syria that oppose Assad. Uh, we have done that clearly. My question to you is you were, like, alleging that these protesters were, like, funded by the United States. And, it, it, and so I'm asking you... Before backed by the United States. Yeah, backed by the United States. Wait, backed, not funded. Funded would imply that there's okay. a monetary transfer. So if we said that we support those protesters, does that justify Bashar al-Assad mowing them down? Because China has said they have supported protests in the United States at some point. They said, hey, look at the BLM protests in the United States. That wouldn't justify us mowing down BLM protesters. That would be disgusting. I would say that no, not necessarily. And I would also say that the U.S. doesn't really care about that, but they will preemptive. Or they will they oh. will take any opportunity given to strike upon that and so discontent amongst the public. So, for example, the U.S. killed a million Iraqis in our war there. Do you think the U.S. really cares about 23 Kurdish people who are fighting against uh, Bashar al-Assad and want to create their own sovereign okay. government? No, okay. it's not 23. There's... There's hundreds of thousands of people in northeastern Syria, but... Um, no, no, no. I'm saying the amount of people that... Wasn't it like tw just over 20 that were killed in that initial... Oh, oh uh, yeah. It was... It was um, what you're talking about... Are you talking you know, about Quamishli or are you, you talking know, about 2011? 2004. Do you, know, okay. do you know directly whether or not like Bashar al-Assad gave the orders to kill yes, those yes, 20 people? Yes, he did. And the reason why they got really angry is because they started tearing down statues of Hafez al-Assad, his father, and he saw this as a challenge to his rule. Uh, he gave the order to send in tanks. There were tanks there. He gave the order. Yes. So did they shoot them with tanks or did they shoot them with guns? Machine guns, but the tanks were to back the troops. 
Okay, so again, they sent in. He he and they ordered tortured children, by tanks. the way. Just to you're, be clear, you're alleging that they had them send in tanks. Well, I'm not alleging. I'm stating a fact. What do you mean? Are you challenging this? Wait. No, this is your allegation that he sent this in is, tanks. So did he? Did he? That's I mean, different. An than allegation saying, to like say that America invaded France sure, during the World stated, War. Yes. You stated. You yes. stated. Whatever. This I don't fucking happens. care. So yeah, did I he? I care a lot about this. But. So that's different. That's different than saying that he ordered those troops to fire upon them with machine guns. Do you have evidence for that? Is that is that a real question? Yes, I mean, in the same so way that the U.S. If, is providing military okay, armament okay. for Taiwan, we're not question. explicitly saying okay. that we want Taiwan so, to start firing upon China. I actually do not know if he specifically said shoot the protesters. But so when you think wait, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Mm -hmm. While it might be an important detail, if I sent military troops into any part of my country where protests were happening against my rule and they start shooting people, they shoot a decent amount of people, 30 to 100 is the, is the estimate that is most widely cited, right? They start shooting these people and then they capture many and torture children, women, and men. Don't you think there should be some repercussions for that? or there should be something done. Because if it isn't, that is a tacit endorsement, and it's not hard to assume that when he sent them in there, the goal was to put down those protests because they were staring down statues of his father, who I'm assuming Assad has a nice view of daddy, and he saw this as a challenge to their rule. I'm just saying that, yeah, I mean, sure, I, I don't support, like, indiscriminate ordered killings of civilians. I'm, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm a leftist. I don't very support that. To say, though. But what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is that it's v that that's very different than alleging uh, that Bashar al-Assad directly ordered those killings and knew about it and he, wanted that. He, no, to no, happen. no. He knew that these happened. He just didn't care. He was like, this is fine. Whatever you need to do. He sent them in to do whatever was necessary to put down these protests. Like he's dropped, he's dropped barrel bombs. He knows that barrel bombs have been used. He doesn't care. He's done multiple, multiple war crimes that he does not uh, give a fuck. Dylan, 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 come on. You know that so many of these allegations put forward surrounding barrel bombs, surrounding Wait, fucking you don't believe he bombing. dropped barrel bombs. Do you want to, do you want to, and hospital bombings is a proven fact. It's been proven time and time and again. In I fact, know it's a the fact, Russians but it matters released in the footage. Hospital, you dumb fuck. There were people in the, in the hospital. hospital. There were civilians in the, in the hospitals. There were civilians in hospitals. If there was Hamas in a building and civilians in a building, that does not give is the Israeli military the okay to destroy that building with all those civilians. I stand against that too, just like I stand against it here. I do too. But what I'm saying is, in the same way that with OP with the OPCW cover up of Duma or with uh, Guta, for example, you have allegations from the By international. The way, I can only go 15 community. more minutes. That, this is almost two hours. Do not align with the facts right? on the ground. Okay. First, I just need to say I have like. And there have been many, many, many okay. entities that have disputed let me, claims. Let me... Not all. Not all. For example, okay. like breadline bombings, those haven't been disputed. Okay. Uh, but there have been many entities that have disputed some of these claims that you're putting okay. forward as if they're, they're statements of fact. Okay, so first, I just want to say I have 15 minutes left, and then we're going to hit the two-hour mark, and that's enough for me. I'm tapping out. I got to get back to, uh, to my girlfriend who just came back from Portugal, and I want to spend some time with her. Um, so that's the first thing. But the second thing I'll say is, okay, there have been many things disputed. There have been things that have been proven wrong because it's a, it's a conflict, an active war zone, and everybody wants to make their side look good and the other side look as bad. So people are going to allege, for example, like when ISIS like attacked uh, 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 cities, they would say, we killed these many people. And then the other side would be like, you killed barely anybody. This happens all the time. But the, but the, but the things I'm putting forward right now are things that are undisputed. I mean, even even oh, Assad, well, wait, wait, let me finish. The barrel bomb claims have been proven by pictures. And the barrel bomb the claims, As they are. wait, let me finish. Assad has basically admitted to this on Russian television. He had an RT interview, it was in about 20, 2017, and he was asked by a Russian reporter working for RT, which is not like a very American imperialist source, I would say. And they asked him like about the barrel bomb claim. And he said, Basically, we'll we use whatever weapons are necessary to like win the war and a bomb explodes. That's what it does. If I ask somebody, did you commit a murder? And, and they said, I used whatever force was necessary to da 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 da. That's, a, that's an admission. That is an admission of guilt from the 2017 RT interview. Not to mention, like, this is like there now the question of how many barrel bombs have been dropped is most certainly so, more disputed. So, so 
what I'm saying is a lot of this stuff has been disputed that you're putting forward as objective what? fact. And what things have I said Dylan, that's being disputed? Let me fucking finish. Jesus Christ. Every time like I your interrupt medicine? you, you have like a fucking <laughs> bitch fit. Let bitch me finish fit. talking. Why are you let so me finish vulgar? talking. You need Jesus. Every single time. Okay. There have been many disputed instances that have been alleged by the international community which I have defended vociferously when there's evidence to back up these disputes, right? Uh, in the case of barrel bombs, I understand, right, that there have been barrel bombs that have been used in the Syrian civil war. There's also been torture that has taken place. There have been civilians that have been killed. This has happened on both sides. I don't condone any of it. The question is, who is engaged barrel in war? Barrel bombs? There's been barrel bombs dropped by rebels? No. Okay. I'm saying as a whole, there's been torture, there's been civi war crimes against civilians, there's been barrel bombs been dropped by Assad. I don't by Russian planes too. I don't support that. Okay. I'm not. A, I know you think I'm a fucking statist, but I don't support that. Well, I, no, um, I don't care if you're a statist. I, I'm a statist too. It, it just depends on like what the government does. Uh, n well, <laughs> that's a whole nother argument. Um, I mean, I would question what what country you're a statist for, but. Well, at the end of the day, at the end of the wait, day, wait, can we just be clear? Wait, wait. When we say when you say status, what do you mean? This is general, I'm generally day, confused. I'm generally no, confused. I don't want to get into another question no, because I'm in know. the middle. I'm, I'm in just, the middle. I'm okay. in the middle. I'm in the middle of a fucking argument. So at the end of the day, there's been a lot of disputed points surrounding the crimes that have happened. I still have unanswered questions that I've asked Syrian journalists about alleged war crimes that have been committed by Bashar al-Assad and evidence that has been brought forward by the international community, right? I still have questions that have gone unanswered by Syrian journalists I've reached out to and by people who have actually been on the ground, okay? Yeah. But also, the key aggressor here today is the United States and the UK who are fomenting a dirty war in the country that has brought about an untold amount of casualties, suffering, loss of life, and bloodshed for the Syrian people, not to mention the fact that the U.S. is now occupying one-third of the country in the Northeast, stealing the raw minerals, cutting off the Syrian government and the people from uh, the, the profits of these raw minerals, and they also have uh, indicated that uh, Jolani, right, that's his name, the guy leading Hayat Tahrir al-Sham in the Idlib province hey, as the de facto leader of the, I mean, that's the group he represented before he put on a, a suit and tie and the U.S. designated him as an asset in the region, right? Yeah. Uh, you can't push back on that. And who is Hayat Tahrir al-Sham linked with? They to. are an al-Qaeda, al-Nusra rebranded yeah. organization. So I have no sympathy for the rebels. I have no sympathy no, for the White for House. None of I have them. no sympathy for the extremists that are waging a war against the Syrian people and the Syrian government and who are occupying their land. You can look at these in isolated events, or you can look at it in the larger scope of what is happening in Syria, and you can understand that this is an all-out campaign to destabilize the country, topple Bashar al-Assad, and steal their raw minerals. Okay, so the first thing uh, I was, one second, you, there was a few questions I had. Let me try to remember the first one. Um, damn, I think I forgot it. So, whatever, I'll just ask this. So... The first thing I would say is you have no sympathy for the rebels whatsoever. Do you stand by that? Uh, yeah, no, I have no sympathy for the rebels. Okay. So in 2011, the rebellion started. <laughs> what do you think the rebels are you doing, gotta, Dylan? You got to let me. What do you think the rebels I are doing? I didn't even get to start my statement. And you immediately. Well, you're going to list you just, one you didn't time let me, in which there was. No, you didn't let me finish. You didn't let me. You didn't let me finish. You got to let me. What's the primary motive Jackson, of the rebels? Talking What's over me doesn't do anything. Can you, you gotta, name it? I'm not going to say anything until I can answer, finish my statement. Can I'm not going to answer any questions. I'm not going to answer any questions. Motive? I'm not going to answer any questions What's until I get to say motive? my statement. I'm not going to answer What's it, Jackson. Primary motive of the rebels? Jackson, I can't answer it until I finish my statement. I'll answer it later if you just let me say my— If you let me, if you let me finish my statement, if you let me finish my statement, I will— Tell What's you the their motive. motive. I will tell, tell your motive if you let me tell finish me my statement. But I want to finish my tell statement. Me. I never got to say tell anything. Me Jackson, tell me now, then do you never, statement. I'll just, do you want me to just mute you again and we'll do the thing no, again? Or do you want me to say my statement first? That's the two options you got. I either mute you and I'll just say my whole thing and answer your question and then you don't get to hear me. Or I'll say it now, my statement, and then I'll answer your questions. I never got to respond to anything you said. That's not how our conversation goes. Daddy's little kidney stone cheered. X100. Okay, What's are you done? Dylan. 
Hello? Jackson, I guess Jackson muted me. Go um, for it. Okay, I'm happy that you finished talking to your chat. Um, so... I my, wasn't talking to them, I was waiting for you to go. Okay, I... Okay, wonderful. So, my statement has to be that in 2011, when the rebellion started, there were many different people with many different interests. Uh, for example, the people who uh, fled from the military, those were not people who were just all rank and file Islamists. Those were military defectors, unless you want to say Al-Qaeda had infiltrated deep into the Assad military, and that's where they all broke off. There are, of course, people who are a lot more moderate. What happened in the long run is that those people got fucking slaughtered long run. 2012, 2013, those people got destroyed. A lot of them were in uh, territory that was first targeted by Assad first and they were and they were jostled out of power and then post 2013 is when the the more islamist types who were fucking disgusting like your uh your al nusras your hayatir al shans took over and those organizations i don't want to see them control syria ever they're disgusting islamists uh, and engage in terror tactics at many times right and so my question would definitely be for the 2012 uh, 2011 period where there were a lot there were a lot more diversity when it came into the rebellion and the defecting military troops, were, which were not terrorists, unless Assad, unless the S Syrian Arab army are just a bunch of terrorists. My question would, would be to you is what would you say about the 2011, 2012 period when there was a diverse rebellion against Bashar al-Assad and the other inter international forces got involved? Would you have supported Bashar al-Assad being overthrown then if, it, if we could have had the, the more moderate wing take over? Uh, I'm referring to the current rebels in Syria. Okay, well, I'm talking, I'm asking you a question about 2012. Well, I'm talking about the rebels okay, that are well, waging war crimes against yes, civilians the, the, in Syria right now. The rebels that Turkey supports, uh, in, for example, in the Afrin region, which they took in a, in a terrible barbaric operation, uh, those are majority jihadists, which I do not like. And Turkey is doing terrible things there. And I will, you will get no objections from me. I don't think Turkey should be even in NATO at this point. Uh, I, I'm a hugely, I will condemn Erdogan any day of the week. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So I'm talking about the rebels in Syria right now. Yes, and I oh, just answered you your want, question. Do you want me to say something? Well, yes, I answered your question. I said, I hate the jihadists. They're terrible. I hope they all lose, and I hope uh, Erdogan stops with the support for, the, for those terror groups. And now my second question is, would you have supported the Syrian people in a successful overthrow in 2011, 2012, since the groups that were more dominant then were not? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, and I'll answer the question. But, oh, my God. You're literally reading this all off of Wikipedia right no, now. This is hilarious. No. This is hilarious. I'm not, it's, oh my God. It's not. There is this, no this way, nothing, bro. No. You're literally on Wikipedia not, right now. Don't, oh J my Jackson, God. This is the 2004 wow. Khamisi riots. Why are you Wikipedia. soying over Wikipedia? I know this. I've read about it, okay? Oh Daughters of Kobane. God. Look it up. Wow. I've read this before. I know wow. about this. That's I hilarious, brought it up. Bro. I brought That's it up. That's hilarious. To I brought That's it up. Hilarious. Who cares? Okay. Who okay. cares? That's funny. That's I don't funny. care. I'll answer your question. I'll answer your question. I don't. Why are you at so disingenuous? Time, at that point in time, the Obama administration was already moving forward with an explicit policy of allow allowing these extremist rebel groups, as they define them, uh, which included ISIS, to run rampant within Syria what do you mean and by that? destabilize the Syrian government. It means that uh, they could have they could have used their forces, either proxy or their own forces within certain regions of Syria uh, to try and stop ISIS from gaining more military control of the Syrian country, okay. right? Uh, John Kerry admitted this. He admitted this. He said, uh, you know, during the Obama administration, during the middle of the Obama administration, we are allowing ISIS to, um, I, I don't remember his exact words. but you, you send me a source find... on it, though? I just want to read it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. It was, uh, it was, uh, I mean, I can play the audio, but I can also just send it to you. Just send it to um, me. Okay. So I, I've actually tweeted this out multiple okay. times. It's a crazy, it's a crazy clip, regardless okay. of, you know, what your take is on Syria. Mm -hmm. Um, it's John Kerry admitting that, uh, Okay, here's what he said, and I'll send it to you. Okay. Uh, the Obama administration was watching ISIS grow in strength in Syria. 
um, and that they were, and then this is me paraphrasing, they were going to, um, paraphrasing, because I don't have the rest of the quote right in front of me because it's audio and I'm reading a portion of the quote right now. They thought that Russia uh, was going to potentially stop them quicker than they did, and it ended up being that Russia had to come in and actually intervene more so in the country to try and save the country uh from these isis militants i encourage you to listen to the clip it's really interesting okay. can you send it to me then yes okay would you also acknowledge that the majority of isis defeats in syria and the fighting that isis had to go through was fighting american-backed proxies that isis was fighting american-backed proxies yes the SDF uh, in part, had the vast majority of casualties against ISIS. They did the vast majority of bringing, attacking, and taking back uh, ISIS's territorial uh, territory. They took their capital. I mean, it, it's undisputable. Um, oh my God, I didn't know that. Um, okay. I would say that it's directly relevant uh, to U.S. backing of these extremist groups, which also had other ulterior motives. Um, that do not align with protecting Syrian sovereignty. Okay. So this is a, this also, is a link. Wait, wait. This is a link to your tweet. I'd be remiss to point out if, you, you know, like Russia and the Syrian forces and the PMF also didn't suffer many casualties in fighting against ISIS. Oh, of course. The PMFs definitely <clears throat> fought ISIS, even though the PMFs uh, were mostly in Iraq. Oh, I'm talking, we're talking more about Syria at the moment. Um, the majority of fighting against ISIS was done by the SDF. So if the idea was ISIS is going to depose Bashar al-Assad and we're going to have, like, and that's going to do all that work, why did we fight, Assad, uh, fight ISIS the most in Syria? Because we were, so, so John Kerry in that clip I just sent you. Yes, could you admits, send me the original source and not one of your tweets, please? Any? I mean, that is the original source. You your can tweet, hear his voice. If your tweet's that. the original source. I, I just want to know where you got this from. Listen to, the, oh, I got it from, uh, I think I got it from a, a YouTube video. It may have been, do you know who the new Atlas is? I think it may have been one of his videos, actually. Um, but this is, I mean, it's John Kerry's voice. No one has ever disputed that. Okay, because, yeah, I just like original sources. Um, because they didn't want a Daesh government and they supported Assad. And uh, we know that was growing. We were watching. We saw the Daesh was growing in strength. And we thought Assad was threatened. We thought, however, we could probably manage, you know, that Assad might then negotiate. Instead of negotiating, you've got Assad and you've got Putin supporting him. Okay. Yes. So you're saying that the United States could have jumped in and got involved to fight ISIS, right? But didn't because we wanted ISIS to depose Assad, right? The, the, so that, my, well, that's, that's what you're alleging that John Kerry said, correct? So that was during a different period in which we were, it was isolated from when we were backing the proxies that were, the extremist proxies that were but, fighting against ISIS and trying to yes, uh, but we started Operation Inherent Resolve, uh, the, the, at least the groundwork for it, in 2013 in the Battle of Kobane when we dropped um, the, the YPG, uh, AK-47s, ammunitions, and then eventually we got involved with airstrikes. And we even coordinated Peshmer about 150 Peshmerga fighters to move in uh, and help, help the, uh, what was the YPG at the time, a uh, fight. And the, and the early remnants of the YPG. And so that was in 2013. The uprising started in 2011, and ISIS was still gaining territory. In fact, most of the world thought Kobani was going to fall. Erdogan famously said, uh, don't worry, no matter what the Americans will do, Kobani will fall. And then it didn't. It was an amazing show that they saw what happened in Shinjar and didn't want it to happen in Kobani. So my question would be, if that's the case, if that was the plan, it was still happening. Why did we stop it then? Why did we stop what? Why did we stop ISIS continue to grow in Syria? We, we stopped that. Um, because we, the United States, wanted to occupy certain regions in which ISIS was gaining a stronghold. We eventually realized that we, it would be more effective, rather than letting ISIS uh, run rampant across the country, gain more territorial control, destabilize Bashar al-Assad, we thought it would be more beneficial if we took the current approach, if we backed these proxies in the region, took over a third of the country, also took over the Idlib province, and decided to steal the resources on our own and reinvest the profits so, into the occupying when forces. When did John Kerry say this? 
So that was before we started uh, supporting the proxy forces. No, this was in 20. This forces. says he was speaking in September of 2016. We started Operation Inherent no, Resolve. No, 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 no. He was speaking in, yes, he was speaking in, in December of 2016, but he's referring to a much earlier point in the Obama administration before. Well, that wouldn't even make yes. any sense. Why, why well, would the Obama that he administration... says here is no, that no, no, were... Dylan, let me finish. Let me finish because that doesn't make any sense. He was speaking then. He was secretly recorded speaking then, but it wouldn't make any sense for him to be reflecting on a period that happened in the future or prior to the point in which the U.S. was providing support for these extremist groups so, that were fighting ISIS on the ground. That would make ze so absolutely zero the sense. The problem with this statement is what this is statement. There's no Wait, problem. It's let me finish. Saying. Let me let me finish because you're alleging that this shows that we were just letting uh, ISIS go go free and go wild. Um, and the reason why was to depose Assad, even though we then took a contradictory policy immediately afterwards. I mean, 2011 to 2013, that's only two years. So you're saying we did a complete 180 in two years, right? And all this quote is saying is that the American government thought that the chaos that was ensuing in, the, in Assad's country would basically cause him to have to negotiate, that he wouldn't have any options due to rebellions, his government defecting, and ISIS, another terror group, gaining uh, ground, which that is usually how you know governments fall, is that their government falls apart, the country falls apart, and then they have no options to negotiate or flee the country. And so this is John Kerry basically saying that, like, we thought that ISIS and all these terror groups were going to basically, and, and the rebels, were going to tear across the countryside and force them to negotiate. That didn't end up happening. But literally, two years later, we were fighting ISIS in the countryside in Operation Inherent Resolve. And so you need more evidence than this to suggest that we were, our plan was to let like ISIS depose Assad when we just thought oh, it was like bro. all the governments. Were I mean, you're, you're nitpicking the statement here. So let me just read because it out. It's for very you important. Full. He says, this is the former secretary of state. Yes. Uh, U S foreign policy absolutely makes no fucking sense. I agree. Oh, okay. Um, but this is exactly what he said. Yeah, he it's said, a grand conspiracy, but it makes no sense. Okay. No, I mean, this is what he's alleging. He, he's saying right here that this is what the Obama administration did. Daesh was great. Daesh refers to ISIS. I'm sure you understand that, but I don't know if everyone in my chat and your chat does. Okay. Daesh was growing the was threatening the possibility of going to Damascus, which we all know is like the major city in Syria, which John would have been absolutely that. horrendous. Have never That's why that. Russia came in because they didn't want a Daesh government, and they supported Assad. And uh, and we know this was gr that this was growing, referring to Daesh. We were watching. Uh, we saw that Daesh was growing in strength. And we thought Assad was threatened. And then he goes on to say, we thought, however, we could probably manage, you know, that Assad might then negotiate. Instead of negotiating, you've got Assad and you've got Putin supporting him. Meaning right. that the, the strategy, this is why they did this, because John Kerry admits that the strategy of allowing this extremist group to try and run rampant across the country. Is his words or your words? Okay, I'll use his words, Dylan. Thank you. Grow in strength, grow in strength, and was willing to go into Damascus. That's a pretty appropriate, uh, yes. you know, that I, I would say, you know, run rampant across the country is kind of similar yes. to saying that. This okay? is, this is so, John so Kerry. Let me finish, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. He acknowledged that that was their preferred method of getting Assad to negotiate. Negotiate for what? Uh, any of the things that they're currently doing? Uh, probably. I'm speculating, but that's probably what, because the goal, the ends haven't changed, but the means have. So he said that we saw Dice growing, they were growing in strength, and they were planning to go into Damascus, and we thought that we'd be able to manage the situation by Assad negotiating with us, but that didn't happen, and Russia came in to support forces on the ground that would counter ISIS. Therefore, the U.S. had no option but to change their means, their, their, their course of action, in uh in syria to support these extremist groups overtake isis and occupy the land which is what they're currently doing in the idlib province and in the northeast of syria okay so first there's there's two things i want to say here. the first thing i would say is if this is what john Kerry said john Kerry is not that intelligent it's what john Kerry now, said okay so the problem is number the first thing is i have a problem with john what john Kerry said i disagree with john Kerry. The idea that that us, Russia was yeah, going Secretary to, of State, why do you disagree? You need to be more specific. Well, I'm about to say why I disagree with John Kerry, if you let me finish my statement. Okay. 
So the reason I disagree is that it was proven immediately when the Russians got involved that their main goal was not to fight ISIS. They said that publicly, but what they immediately started doing was bombing rebel strongholds, right? They bombed rebel strongholds. The majority of their bombs hit rebel strongholds. So if their priority was to fight ISIS, like the Russian government said and John Kerry said, why was it that they immediately targeted the rebels, not ISIS? When you say immediately, when are you referring like, to? Like right when they get into the country and start bombing campaigns, because that's the main way that they supported them militarily. Was so what were they doing before they got into the country? They were supporting Assad through, through other means. They were the, no, I mean, I think I misunderstood you. Okay. So we, you, I mean, you, you're not alleging that the U.S. Who are you saying they? The Russians. Okay. So what was the U.S. doing before they started supporting these extremist groups? Um... Well, I, we were saying the protests, there's good. Like, what do you mean? Are you talking about before Timber Sycamore? Because Timber Sycamore, like, basically almost I'm, immediately. I'm, I'm specifically referring to the, the point that you haven't been able to refute yet, that John Kerry said this, and that well, he no, was— Well, no, I never, that US, I never said that he didn't he, say this. I just asked for, for, for the evidence. That, that it's this is the evidence. It was yes, and now I'm talking about the there's quote. A reason, with you. And there's now I'm a reason about why the there's a Dude. reason why there's nothing on the books about the US providing direct uh open pathways for ISIS to run rampant or as you so, put it. Uh, what you're you saying it, is but this is a, this is John masses. Kerry. But we do have we do have we do have uh evidence of Israel, who is our close ally, providing direct support for ISIS and Daesh and providing medical support so, and providing strategic report uh support. But we also have this evidence, this audio clipping, this is evidence from the former Secretary of State claiming that prior to launching these uh you know these these uh proxy extremist missions in the country to occupy regions of the country, which only had to have happened because Russia came in and helped Assad defend the country from ISIS. Uh, this was the preferred method, the preferred uh, means of the U.S. empire in Syria. Okay, so you didn't engage with anything I said. So the you, what I you listen, no, listen, engage. listen to what I'm saying. Yes, uh, you know, you did. You, gotta, you didn't. You got to listen if you're going to speak. Tell me where multiple... I'm wrong. Tell me where John Kerry's wrong. You haven't done that. I did. I said that if John Kerry thought that the Russians were going to get involved to then stop ISIS, why is it that when they got involved, they then fought the rebels primarily? That who fought the rebels? The Russians. Because the U.S. didn't think that, that Russia was going to get yes. involved. They so that's why that... I'm saying I disagree with John Kerry. <laughs> he was wrong about it. He was factually no. wrong. He was factually no. wrong about yes. the Russians. The US, US, U.S. made an assessment. Yes. They thought that they were going to be able to get— They thought that nothing would have come out of this. They thought that it was going to be—the end was going to be that ISIS forced Assad to negotiate ISIS. with the U.S. to come and provide some form or another of strategic no, port, that's, support. That's— Okay, that no, you don't, you don't have evidence of that. But we did it anyways, and we have occupied evidence of what the land. Now you're making more claims that are not true. You don't have—okay, you have evidence. No, wait, wait, let me, finish. let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. You just you said— no, the basic tenements of what again, was happening. I don't claim to be. I did that work. I, I carried the water. I already did it. You don't. You don't understand anything about Syria. You You've just come here and made claim after country. claim while well, not understanding oil. the history you're of Syria. Me. You didn't you even know about the Quemishli riots. You didn't even know that Bashar al-Assad was was the leader in 2004. You don't know anything. You didn't let me finish. You gotta let me finish. She even holds differing policy viewpoints than I do on Syria. That's okay. Okay. You, you wait, no, wait, 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 back up, rot, back up, you back don't up, understand you don't know, you, are, you, you just wrong. lied, I know I you. you lied I know again, I you, because you lied like the one again. label Stop. that you pout around and Please. claim is that you are back someone off. who should be trusted Listen. with okay. public information and Praise public narrative. Praise Jesus, hallelujah, this boy needs to be saved, on a lot of issues. this wrong boy on needs to be saved, you have it. On tons of issues. My God, US listen to him go. He's like a wind-up toy. He's like the Energizer body. Just keeps going. They're stealing Syrian oil. They're stealing Syrian oil. And they're occupying the land. He just keeps going. He just never stops. If you okay, he's just muted. I'm not listening to him anymore. Okay, we're just going to wait until he's done doing his little like shindig, done whining, and then we'll unmute, and then we'll talk to him again, okay? He done yet? I don't know if he's done yet. He's still going. Number one, I know Michaela Wilkes doesn't disagree with me on that because I she wrote does. because 
She does. I wrote the press statement that she released on Syria. She does. I wrote the press statement. She does. Go look at her website right now. It's different. He oh, was a so former, former yeah, and guess what? Advisor. And I don't agree. And now. I don't work for her now. So when she worked for different. me, she 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 took my advice. She chose that your statement was such brain rot that she had no other choice but to uh, alter you her position. You know that? You talk to you her about that? Wrong. I can you call her. Wrong. I can call her right now. You Do you know how wrong. bad it would look if I called her right now and she told me she agreed with me? She agreed with you, but does she I agree can call with you her. Now? Yeah, you want me to does call her right now? now? I can call no, her. No, I, I don't want to bother her, but she oh, doesn't agree with okay. me now. You don't want to bother her. She's okay because she wouldn't take no, the time. You, She's a very you, lovely you woman. She's a very lovely woman. She doesn't agree with you now? I don't care. That's but let me talk to her because the thing is, I don't even know. And who cares? She has a different opinion on this. So she got a worse you opinion. Had such an That's not state. even true. Oh my god! Is a true Why would this? This doesn't. This she doesn't even matter. This doesn't See, she matter. She does not support U.S. warmongering she or does, psyop this operations. Doesn't matter. This She's doesn't true anti matter. She this doesn't, doesn't agree. With okay, I'm gonna call her. Let's call her right now. She doesn't agree with your opinion on Syria. I can call her right now. She does not agree with your. You don't want me to call her. Why don't you want me to call her? She doesn't agree with your current opin opinion on Syria. Want me to call her and I can ask her. I can look at her own website. I've uh, done okay. it. Okay. Well, you have a nice day. It's way past the two hour mark for me. I gave you an extra defeat, 12 minutes. You what do you mean? Imperialist shit lib. I accept your defeat. Wait, can I ask you one last question? Since you're. Infrared is okay. rising. Let me ask Yankees you. Are why rising. are you funded by pro Assad lobby groups? Why are you funded by pro Assad lobby groups? Rising. You're funded Marxist by pro Assad lobby groups. Rising. You accepted an award named after anti Semites. Named after anti Semites. You accepted an award made by anti Semites. Made by anti Semites. And you accepted it. Is you are funded by you, pro Assad lobby groups. You accepted their money. The you accepted their. You accepted their award. Load. One in the chat. You accepted if funding. Are rising. You are so fucking chat, stupid. Pinkies are rising. Why are you well, so I see stupid? Only ones in the chat. Wow, look only at your chat. Your chat, chat agrees only with you. Only ones in the chat. Tankies are rising. Okay, Bread chat. Spe spam Omegalol if this man falling. needs Jesus. Only ones in the spam chat. Spam Omegalol if he needs Jesus. Okay. He needs. He needs Jesus Christ. Only ones. Look in the at them. All of them think you need Jesus. I'll convert you. I see only I know a pastor who can convert you and bring you to God, which you most certainly need. Jesus, Amen. Save this boy from his damnation. From his damnation. From his damnation. Oh, Amen. Jesus Christ, save this boy from his damnation. Save him from his ways. From his pro Assad lobby group money taken as he as he takes awards from anti-Semitic awards. Oh boy, he loves it. He loves that pro Assad. Assad, a pro Assad lobby group. But I'm why'd so you take that Assad money? Why'd you take the, the Assad money? Why'd you take the Assad money? Why'd you take I'm the Assad so money? Why did you take the Assad money? Why did you take the Assad money? Why did you take the Assad money? Why'd 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 you accept the award from an award funded by pro Assad lobby groups and it's named Named after a journalist who worked for an anti-Semitic news organization called Press TV, which is also the official arm of the Iranian government, the official news organization. And you want to know something about Press TV? They have talked about how Jews steal African babies for their organs. They have said terrible, terrible things about Jews. They have questioned and platformed Holocaust deniers and questioned the Holocaust. Uh, Why did you accept that award? Why did you accept an award from such disgusting people? Why? Why would you do that while claiming you care about civilians and you accept their money from people who support those with blood on their hands and you won't answer my question because you know you took the fucking money because you tell other people they sell out while you sell out you claim to say aoc I mean, sold out that, yet you know. sold out you accepted you that money and that. you're and you're talking over me because you can't policy. accept that you I'm can't so accept it. That. You can't you accept it. it. And so you know what? You go home. You accept that more Assad money. You continue to hang out with your anti-Semite friends. And you have a good fucking time, okay? Maybe you can talk about how the Holocaust didn't happen, just like the award you accepted from a news organization named after those who work for Press TV, a Holocaust-denying news network that works for the Iranian government, while you claim not to sell out. Okay, that's enough of that. I hung up. He'll call it a debate win, but... He, he just does the infrared rising fucking bullshit, okay? These people don't know what they're talking about when they talk about foreign policy. They have no clue. And he says that AOC sold out when he literally sold out 
to pro-Assad lobby groups. We can talk about this right now. And he talked over me because he doesn't want to talk about this. But he did accept money from pro-Assad lobby groups. That's a massive claim. Face. Did I substantiate that claim? To show his face moving forward. Let's see if I can find this. By the way, I, when he accepted to debate me, I didn't think he would. That was the worst decision of his fucking life. He looked like such a such an imbecile he couldn't substantiate basically anything he said and basically just made an argument of might makes right i don't understand how he can claim to be left wing and then make might makes right arguments if you cannot be if you cannot get independence on your own then fuck you what does that say about native americans what does that say about catalonians what does that say about kurds what does it say about any people who wish to rule themselves okay let's see if i can uh find this this tweet i'm talking about Let's see if I can find this Jackson Hinkle tweet. Okay. Do 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 do. Anybody got the? Yeah, this is the this is the organization I'm talking about. But I'm trying to find my thread where I tore it apart and talked about why this award is absolutely god awful, and they give you money. We know they give you money, and it's funded by pro Assad lobby groups. And he accepted this award while claiming to not have sold sold out. You want to know who this journalist is? This journalist died. Very sad, but you know what she did? She worked for Press TV, the same Press TV, which has claimed on multiple occasions that the Holocaust didn't happen, occurred. that the Jews like abducted babies to like sacrifice organs and like push these terrible anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. And Press TV also so happens to be what? A Kurd is a Kurd. It also so happens to be an Iranian state-owned news and documentary network. So it is an Iran. It's the it's the arm of the government of Iran. Okay, let's go through this quick. Okay, so that he has been calling me out for a while, right? And he doesn't talk about this, but let's let's go let's dig down into it, okay? So so a, a relevant rolled in for it, and I rolled Henkel. Okay, we should be the tag team. Okay, they can only get back their honor in a tag team between me and a relevant. People like Dylan Burns have nefarious reasons for pushing talking points that they push. Everything is a conspiracy, huh, Jackson Hinkle? People can see who supports my work. Besides some video game sponsors, it's 100% viewership back. Can you say the same? Recently, you announced with joy that you had been awarded and accepted the, I can never pronounce it, but it's like the Serena Shim Award for the uncompromised integrity in journalism. It's named after Serena Shim, a journalist who died in 2014, very sad, while working for Iran's state owned news outlet press tv the outlet has a long history of pushing anti-semitic remarks holocaust denial and messages beneficial to the iranian government once in 2009 they published a 100 percent false report that jews were harvesting the organs of algerian children they gave a platform to david duke who for those who don't know was the former grand wizard of the kkk to say that america is totally in the hands of zionists they would platform him multiple times press tv claimed that jews and and or Israel were behind the attack on the Charlie Hebdo office in Paris, the creation of ISIS, and the 2011 attacks in Norway that left 77 people dead in the 9-11 terrorist attacks from the ADL. I could talk about how Press TV tried to connect Israel to the development of COVID-19 or any other number of incidents. Moving on from Press TV, the award in question says that it honors non-mainstream journalists who continue to tell challenging truths in difficult times and funds provided by this award enable those courageous and journalists to continue their work in an environment that penalizes them for the clarity of the vision. By the way, can I just say, a person by the name of Jimmy Dore also got this award. I wonder why, you know, Jackson likes Jimmy so much. The winner of the award gets money in conjunction with the award itself, meaning that the organization helps fund the winner's platform through a cash prize. There is no transparency from the org on how it chooses who they award money to, sadly. You can look at who they have given the award to in the past. The recipients include Peter Ford, director of the British Syrian Society, which is headed by Fawaz Arkraz, Assad's father-in-law i wonder why assad's father-in-law would be getting a this award vanessa Beely, she met assad in 2017 and described it as her proudest moment eva barlett who hailed from assad's fraudulent who hailed assad's fraudulent election in 2014 writes for a russian today quite frequently the same russia today that alleged that jews controlled hillary clinton's campaign and has praised and oh and edited ak-47s and and um rocket launchers under the backs of afghan refugees and has praised the 
the North Korean government after a state-sponsored visit, and many more. What is similar between most of the recipients of this award, whether they be in person or organization, is that they support or play defense for the government of Bashar al-Assad. They function as a pro-Assad organization who gives money to those who aligns with that worldview. Now, tracking the origin of the money given to recipients is difficult to a lack of a transparency. The links you can find with it is currently publicly available is to the Association for Investments and Popular Actions Committee. The owner of this organization is Kamal Obeid, who is a well-known 9-11 truther. Their treasurer is Paul Lundre. He had appeared on formerly mentioned Press TV, the anti-Semitic Iran state news agency, on many occasions and went to Syria to be an election observer in 2014. The observers called it legitimate democratic expression of the Syrian people. Uh, Richard uh, also, uh, I forget Richard, it's not Richard Mendez, Richard, what's his face? Um... Richard, uh, somebody will remind me, but he's this person online who does the same stuff. You know what I mean? Um, right here, you can look at some of the many totally legitimate elections of Bashar al-Assad. Medhurst, yes, Richard Medhurst. And uh, this is 2021, of course. This individual, by the way, I could go in length about how each of these are bullshit. If anybody wants to challenge me on that, I'd love to do it. This individual repeated the claim during the 2021 Syrian elections, even though it was similarly fraudulent. The organization is open about how they lack transparency. It's, it says on the website, we invite inquiries, but will not provide a lens of sponsored projects beyond what we have described herein, except with the permission of the projects themselves and only after a vetting procedure. I wonder why said organization doesn't want transparency. Let's go into that. Thankfully, though, you can find out more by looking. I dug deep for this through the U.S. Treasury EIN number 20-516191. Since it is a tax-exempt nonprofit, by looking at the EIN number and the IP address, you can see that the Syria Solidarity Movement has the same EIN number and IP address. This group is an openly pro-Assad and... The founder just so happens to be the first winner, Eva Barlett, meaning she funds this organization and then gave herself an award, which I got to say, really jerking yourself off there. This is the same woman who praised Assad's election and the North Korean government, by the way, on a state-sponsored government visit to North Korea. This is the same organization that has done things like pay to Dennis Kucinich, $20,000 to make a speech in Britain about Syria. Dennis has a long history of making statements in defense of Bashar al-Assad. Records from 2018 show that the Association for Investments and Popular Action Committee has paid out least large, decently sums of money to the winners of the award. Here's a great example. Max Blumenthal got $20,000 fucking dollars. $20,000. Oh my God. That's a lot of money. That's I could I could get through college with that type of money. If I was getting lovely pro Assad lobby money like that, my God, that would be beautiful. Now Jackson Hinkle does not get twenty thousand dollars. Of course not. He's not a bit. He's not like Max Boom would fall. He's not that big of a fish. But I am interested in exactly how much money he got from this. Fun fact, Dennis Kucinich eventually gave the money back to the organization after he was confronted about the source of his $20,000. At the time, he said that, this is from Dennis Kucinich, anyone who stands for peace must be able to remain above the appearance of influence. And um, here's my uh, communist and uh, CIA picture. Here's my CIA picture that he can use against me. And here's when it was made worse. A and is here's curve. when it was made even worse to be used against me for propaganda purposes to dismiss what I just said about Jackson Hinkle, the person who calls out AOC for selling out before accepting awards like this. So there you go. A not only can Assad not, uh, not Assad, uh, but Jackson Hinkle not defend his positions at all. He's a fucking moron, but he's also paid and given awards a is a to be a moron. He's given awards and money to be a moron from awards from organizations that push pro-Assad interests. A curd is a curd. Named after someone who worked for an anti-Semitic news agency that just so happens to be the state arm of the Iranian government. So who is above influence, a curd Mr. Hinkle? Is a curd. Who is above it? 
the world may never know. But that's enough for this.